In the serenity of Southern Virginia, you'll find a concrete and asphalt half-mile racetrack, which once again today is hosting the NASCAR Winston Cup Series as the 1999 season rolls on with the eighth race of the year. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, NASCAR, welcomes you live to the Goody Body Pain 500 Speedway in Virginia. After seven events of 99, Jeff Burton continues to hold on to the points lead. Defending series champion Jeff Gordon fifth, and last week's winner at Bristol, Rusty Wallace, is eighth. Four of the top ten have never won on a short track. In 14 seasons, Wallace has the most victories. Jeff Gordon's eight wins came in just five seasons. In the last year, the short tracks have been long on heroes. These full-scale battles on scaled-down fields have brought out the best in the best. Seven races, seven different winners. Gordon grabbed his win at Bristol. Bobby Hamilton was picture-perfect at Martinsville. Terry's Richmond win is remembered for talent and temper. Mark Martin had an emotional evening under the Tennessee lights. The other Jeff won back home in Virginia. And Rudge run at Martinsville capped a memorable season of short track grit and glory. Last Sunday, Rusty Wallace won for the seventh time at Bristol. Seven races, seven different heroes. Buckle up, Virginia, because the NASCAR Winston Cup stars are ready to flex some muscle in Martinsville. Racing at this place is a lot like working out on a treadmill. You run your foot off all day, but you never really seem to get anywhere. Seven different winners in the last seven races. Could this be the date we see number eight? Well, one guy to watch is Ken Schrader. Last time he won a race, Rocky IV was a hit. But last year, he was fourth in short track points with four top tens. He's got a good car and starts sixth. Then there's Dale Jarrett. Five top five finishes in the last seven short track races no wins and he'll need a rocky like effort to deliver the knockout punch today no winner at martinsville has ever started outside the top 25. dale jarrett starts 31st clubber lang got better odds in the nfl joe gibbs made a career out of molding young talented players into super bowl champions now his management expertise is being used to mold the careers of two drivers on the verge of superstardom Bobby Labonte is a proven winner who knows how to play through the pain while eyeing a championship. Gibbs' rookie draft choice, Tony Stewart, is no stranger to championships. And with only seven once to cup races under his belt, he's navigated this season like a seasoned veteran. Last week, Tony survived the bumps and bruises of the Bristol Motor Speedway to finish in the 16th position. Today, he starts from the pole. However, he faces his toughest task yet, 500 laps at Martinsville. If he finishes the day with brakes and all the fenders on the car, we'll know he's for real. Bobby starts eighth. He's third in points, but Martinsville hasn't been one of his best tracks. In 12 races, he has only four top 10 finishes with a best of eight. He hopes to improve on that today. Short track pit road action, otherwise known as controlled chaos in a confined area. The frenzied pace of these garage area gladiators as they dodge the cars and each other is both fascinating and frightening to watch. The ferocity with which they attack the task at hand is reminiscent of an old western cavalry charge with the horses, rifles, and vehicles replaced by jacks, air guns, and yes, even an occasional gas can. It is gridlocked without the grid. There are few defined lines and fewer defined rules. No turn signals here, just fenders and bumpers reappearing in the left lane. As for courtesy, amidst these tight quarters, road rates may be the rule rather than the exception. Historically here at Martinsville, about half the drivers would complain during pre-race that they couldn't win today because they were pitting on the backstretch. Well, not anymore. Today, for the first time in this track's 51-year history, there is one single unified pit road. And over to the pit, a driver will slow to the prescribed 35 miles an hour and enter up beside turn three. Now, to run from turn three, this C-shaped gauntlet all the way down to turn two's exit will take about 44 seconds. You stir in 16 or 18 seconds more for tires and fuel. Now you're over a minute. That translates to three green flag left on the track. Needless to say, one untimed pit stop followed by a caution could be a disaster. So today, NASCAR's shortest track may pose NASCAR's biggest challenge 
to crew members in terms of pit strategy. Jerry, today the shortest and the slowest. Next week we go to Talladega, the longest and the fastest. And although we have been here many times at Martinsville, once again we have a new twist because, Ned, this new pit area may create some problems for these drivers. It very well could, Bob, not only on green flag pit stops, but also on yellow flag pit stops. Pit road is very narrow. And if somebody comes out in front of somebody else and they get crossed up, it could box the whole field. So it could be very dangerous there. The spotter, his role is going to increase today. Normally he might get to relax a little bit when the caution flag is out and they're making pit stops, but today he's going to have to be watching his driver go down pit road. I can't believe it. We've been on the Air Force, what, three or four minutes now, and we haven't mentioned brakes at Martinsville. Well, I've got to talk about brakes because that is still the number one enemy of the drivers here. Being able to keep the brakes on the car, have something to stop the car for that last 100, 100 laps. Imagine Tony Stewart's problem. He's a rookie on the pole at Martinsville trying to stay in front of these guys and still have brakes. It will be a difficult job for Tony Stewart. Gentlemen, start your engine! ESPN's live coverage of the Cody's Body Paint 500 from Martinsville being brought to you by Everstart Battery. All the full franking power your truck, car, boat, or more will ever need. Available at Walmart. By Jimmy Dean, America's favorite sausage and sponsor of the number 30, Jimmy Dean Pontiac. And by Briggs and Stratton. Put more power into your lineup. Make sure all of your outdoor power equipment has a powerful, dependable Briggs and Stratton engine. Well, I live out here on a little old farm. I got a pickup, two tractors, a mower, and a little old boat. Never start battery and never one of them. One in that old pickup's been in there over four years. Starts right up every morning. Ever start. All the cold cranking power you'll ever need. No matter if it's 100 degrees or zero outside. Starts every time. Ever start. The name says it all. Everything I got come from Walmart, except my wife and the milk cow. And if they had a place, I'd put a battery on them. It is more than sport. features designed to meet your needs. But the ones that have the edge to do the job right have one feature in common. A powerful, high-performance Briggs & Stratton engine. Make sure your lawnmower is powered by Briggs & Stratton. The power in power equipment. Martinsville Speedway in Virginia is the scene of the Goodies Body Pain 500 set to go, and you can see that there it's a sold-out house here at Martinsville. This place seats now over 80,000 people, and all of them are set to go. We'll have 20 Fords in the starting field today, 14 Chevys, and nine Pontiacs. Ford has a lead in the manufacturer's points lead. Now the Everstart Walmart starting lineup has Tony Stewart on the pole, his first NASCAR Winston Cup pole in his eighth start. Mark Martin, who finished second at Bristol last week, will start alongside. In the second row is Jeff Burton, who of course is the points leader, and Jerry Nadeau, who has his best start of 1999, and in fact, his best start since Sears Point last year, when he started on the outside of the front row. As you take a look at the rest of the starting lineup, bear in mind that the first 24 drivers broke the previous track record. It was shattered in qualifying on Friday. 
Benny, any theories as to why it was so fast? You know, I don't know, Bob, and the strange thing is the mechanics and the exactly why the cars are so fast this time. They said they're getting a tremendous forward grip, forward five here, and that's the problem they had last year. And Goodyear says this is the same time from last year. And, of course, they are using the, they're not using the 5-5 five five rule. They are able to run a higher spoiler, and the air dam is lowered to the ground, so that should help on a uh, track like this as far as speed is concerned. There's Bobby Hamilton. He was the last to break the track record. All of these guys were under, but just slightly, the previous track record, which was held by Ted Musgrave. Jeffrey Bodine is celebrating his 50th birthday today. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. He predicted on television last night that his 50th birthday would produce a win here this afternoon. Wow. And all these guys last year would say they don't have a chance to win because of the backstretch pits. This year, all the cars will be pitted on that one pit road. If they have a good race car, pass cars, there's no disadvantage when the caution flag does wave. And these guys, of course, took provisionals to get into the starting lineup, including Gary Cope who starts back in 43rd position and three drivers fail to qualify for this event. Dave Marcus, Morgan Shepard, and Buckshot Jones. Field now is uh, on its warm-up laps, getting set for the start. There's Jerry Cooper, Jimmy Dean on, so, on board. There's a Red Bessis on board camera on Kenny Irwin. There's Bill Ellis, McDonald's on board camera. There's Circuit City on board camera with Bobby Labonte. Rusty Wallace has the Miller Lite on board camera. Mark Martin, the Babylene on-board camera and our pole center tony stewart with a home depot on-board camera and we see from the lights flashing on the pontiac pace car they will run one more lap before the green flag down to jerry punch one of the concerns there pitting in turns one and two where mark martin and jeff burton are is being able to see to get in your pit because of the a window the a pillar on the left side of the car you can't see that's why all the crews put those numbers on the wall the truck driver can see that number and know exactly when he's supposed to turn into his pit coming up to make a hard left let's go to bill weber at martinsville this is always one of the most important guys at the racetrack the gas man because of difference in gears and not knowing what kind of gear some guys are running and the amount of grip in the tires no one's really sure how their fuel mileage will go today could be any way from 130 to 160 john Usually we see four tire changes during pit stops. Today for track position, there's not getting a lot of wear on the left side tire, so we could see a lot of two tire stops. Field comes down for the start of 500 laps of racing yeah. here at Martinsville. And there's the green, and we're racing. Tony Stewart doesn't get a very good start. He had a problem or several problems yesterday in happy hour. He's going to be at least third as the first lap is completed and may go quite a bit further back. And he didn't get off the good start at all. Is the engine or what happened? And as a matter of fact, when he got down the corner, he got a bit loose because this is how the other cars get by. Mark Martin has 27 starts here, but this is only his seventh time that he has led at this facility. He led 40 laps in his first race here back in 1981 and finished third. And so Tony Stewart continues to go back on the outside lane now. That's Rich Bickle in the 45 car. Unless he can find himself a hole, Bob, he'll continue to go back, too, because at least in the early going, that inside group is the place to be. Already out of the top ten is Tony Stewart. Meanwhile, up front, here is Ken Schrader to the inside of Jerry Nadeau with a battle for second position. You saw the leader, Mark Martin, go by. He already has a second and a quarter lead on these cars as they battle for that second spot. Finally, Schrader is able to get by Jerry Nadeau. Now, Rusty Wallace trying to do the same thing. Jeff Burton goes to the inside. Now, with Nadeau hung out, he's going to lose several positions. Tony Stewart did get back in line in the last place. Now, here's Rusty Wallace going for second. 91 car. Tick Trickle already has front end damage. And I'll tell you what, that can be disastrous because that's up where the brake ducts are located and you have to get that air in to cool these brakes if you're going to be able to use them at all. And here's how it happened. Dick Trickle early in the race getting into the back looks like Dale Jarrett. Just a chain reaction. 
There's the lead that Mark Martin has over Rusty Wallace. Jeff Burton has now moved to the third position. Ken Schrader running fourth, then they do, followed by Irvin, Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Kyle Petty, and then Tony Stewart running back in 10. Jerry, what happened to Tony Stewart at the green flag? Well, they were concerned early on about the problems they had in happy hour yesterday, about the car washing up in the middle of the corner with the push not being able to turn, and if that happened and someone got under him, he could possibly get tapped bind up the field behind him and create one massive wreck. Well, apparently Tony did not want to be a problem at the beginning. The car went into turn one, washed up. He let some of the leaders go by and fell back in line. He just said a moment ago, I don't have a problem with the car. I'm going to sit here and ride and see if we can fix it throughout the day. We see Jerry Cope, the Jimmy Dean sausage. And for a taste of the race, let's go on board and check out the telemetry. Trouble down in turn one. Whoa, a big traffic jam. And the Jeremy, Jeremy Mayfield is just sitting still. Finally, they get the car rolling again. Now caution comes out. Caution was late coming out, but finally it is. And look at the left front tire flat on Jeremy Mayfield. And he's trying to not get lapped, but it's probably going to tear up some stuff trying to get back caught up with the field. And Benny, he had really made an advance. He started 32nd, had moved up to about 21st position on the outside, but got caught up in a mess here. With this. Let's look at it here. Watch for it up at the top of your screen. Three or four cars involved. That's Kenny Wallace in the 55, Ted Musgrave in the 75. I don't think Steve Park hit anything, did he? It looks like he was able to stop, but yeah. meanwhile, here we see Jeremy Mayfield now he's got a long ways to go he might be lapped because the pace car is now going in turn three as he slowly comes down pit road down to John Kernan and Jeremy Mayfield fading into his pitch you can see they're having to pick it up to get the jack under the car the left front tire completely down some sheet metal damage to the left side of the nose the crew going to work they're only going to change left side tires so they do not lose the lap because remember it takes so long to get in and out of pit road now he's headed down pit road and i believe they may bring him back in again and uh make a few more repairs to the 12th car well he is going to lose a lap yes he is going to lose a lap because he was the last car he was 43rd in the line and when he made that pit stop the pace car goes around and does put the 12 car a lap down now, that's something we didn't talk about as far as another problem on uh, these, this one pit road deal. So he has to wait until the entire field goes by. Here's the replay from on board with Bill Elliott. Goes down the corner, and I guess that... I know it's hard to indict someone because you, the, obviously there was contact with someone, but we really couldn't tell who. In any case, Elliott uh, escaped with... No damage from that incident. Now, finally, Jeremy Mayfield is able to roll off the back pit and back out onto the racetrack. So he loses a lap. Now, Dick Trickle there in the 91 also made a pit stop, but he was able to stay on the lead lap. Twelve laps have been completed here at Martinsville with a caution waving. Back with more in just a moment. When it comes to building a comfortable home, you certainly have your options. But making your home feel as good as it looks requires an essential. Ask for Tyvek Home Wrap from DuPont. It helps keep weather out, comfort in. And that's basic to better building. What's the hottest NASCAR publication you need to get your hands on every week? It's NASCAR Winston Cup Scene, America's number one source for timely, in-depth coverage of Winston Cup, Bush, and the Craftsman Truck Series. Inside, you'll find the latest news, award-winning color photography, features, personality profiles, point standings, and much more. To get a hold of your own copy, call 1-800-WCC. For all the news in NASCAR racing, you've got to read NASCAR Winston Cup Scene. Call now to subscribe. Get ready for this year's Triple Crown. 
ESPN Classic takes you inside the track for a look back in time at horse racing's crown achievement on Run for the Crown. But to get ESPN Classic, you got to call 1-800-CLASSIC. Nine half-hour specials reveal the inside stories behind every legendary race with insights from jockeys and race experts. Run for the Crown starts Monday, April 26th at 7.30, only on ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Welcome to the NASCAR Bush Series. It's a combination of raw speed and nose to nose, bumper to bumper, door to door competition. It takes a great driver to win here. Always has, always will. The NASCAR Bush Series. This is NASCAR. Trying to get on the inside of Jerry Nadeau down in turn one. Jerry's going to give him plenty of room. And Gordon will take that spot away. Moves him into the fifth spot. Ernie Irvin will follow in the 36th car. Ernie's in his 300th NASCAR Winston Cup start here this afternoon. Jeff Burton goes to the lead. What were you going to 
Jones say? Jeff Burton goes for the lead. All right. <laughs> Rusty was perhaps running a little bit harder than he wanted to at this point in the race, having to use too much brakes. So he said, if, Jeff, if you want to run that fast, you go ahead. I didn't fight him too much. Brett Bodine, Jerry Nadeau, and Sterling Marlin running together. Sterling Marlin had the hot car in happy hour last night. Martin Martin had the fastest car, but Sterling Marlin uh, was tied second fastest time in happy hour. And remember, Sterling Marlin led 231 laps here last fall and then had a battery problem that took him out of contention. Jimmy Dean on board camera, and we've got a camera pointing back to the left front tire. And we can see the tire flex and all that other stuff when his car goes down in the corner. He's on the straightaway. Now watch as he goes down the corner, the tire flex. Look how the tire just pulls away from the chassis itself. And look out. See, right here is a sway bar arm. That's a link that hooks a sway bar to the frame. Look at the distance. Look at the distance between the two. Now when he gets to the straightaway, that distance just completely goes away. That much, that's how much flex we're talking about in the tire itself. And you see the tire wobbling, the sidewall wobbling. That's because it only has about 12, 15 pounds of air in that tire. They run just enough tire, just enough air pressure in the tire to keep the tire glued against the wheel. Now we're on the suspension cam of uh, Kenny Irwin's car, and look at how hot the brakes are already. Boy, he can't use those brakes no. for 500 laps that way. No, he any, won't have any brakes. There's never a chance, never a chance to cool off. He's uh, in very heavy traffic back there running behind Bill Elliott. And Here's Jeff Gordon is moving up his spot, taking third away from Mark Martin. So we've got Burton followed by Rusty Wallace, about a half a second behind, and then... Jeff Gordon is about a one and a half seconds behind Burton. Thirty-four laps have been completed. If we continue to go green for a while, here's going to be about a hundred laps before we have the first series of pit stops, which could be very interesting. Right now, as Jeff Burton down in front at Martinsville. All-Star Racing Team Collector's Cup, featuring all seven members of the Hardy's Racing Team. Martin's coming in for an unscheduled pit stop. It holds 44 ounces of your favorite beverage, even if you can't. Get your Collector's Cup now at Hardy's, a proud sponsor of the Roush Racing family. Today we're going to learn the easy way to mow the lawn. This is a lawn. This is a boy, lawn, boy, lawn, boy, lawn boy. Easy, huh? Lawn boy, easy to start, easy to use, easy to maintain. Any questions? Why are there two of you? You've really been wanting a satellite dish, haven't you? You want all the sports, you want all the movies, but you're concerned about the costs, the programming, the installation. Hey, come into Radio Shack. Yeah, we'll explain everything. And now an RCA Direct TV system is down to $149.99 with three free months of programming when you subscribe to Total Choice. Even free installation and no long-term commitment. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. NASCAR and Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse both started from humble beginnings. But you made us bigger. You made us better. You made us faster. So consider this a quick thanks. Sure beats the heck out of a thank you card. 
Lowe, official sponsor of the number 31 NASCAR Winston Cup stock car. Did you get them brakes at Pep Boys? Yeah, I did. I appreciate it. Get quality parts and brake service from just $79.99. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. We're here with grades 3, 4, and 5 to help you remember 10, 10, 3, 4, 5 long distance where calls are always 10 cents a minute. So what's that number? 10, 10, 3, 4, 5. Excellent. Dial 10, 10, 3, 4, 5 today. to the Goodies Body Paint 500. Later today at 4.30 Eastern Time, the first race of the season, IROC 23 from Daytona. By the way, we'll be on the air next Saturday at Talladega Live with an IROC race. NASCAR Shop Talks at 5.30 this afternoon. And RPN tonight with Reese Davis at 8 o'clock tonight on The Deuce for the wrap-up of all today's activity. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Well, the leaders have encountered some traffic already. Jeff Burton has already put the 30 car of Derek Cope down the lap, and now he comes up on Johnny Benson. And he's going to be in heavy traffic from here on, unless the caution comes out, because cars are really scattered all around the racetrack. You put 43 cars on a half a mile racetrack, and it's pretty well put in the middle. This is on board with second place Rusty Wallace. He's trying to get by Johnny Benson. Meanwhile, this traffic has allowed the 24 of Jeff Gordon to catch up. And we go back to Johnny, John Andretti and Ward Burt running side by side. Battle back to the 19th and 20th position. Along with Robert Preston and Mike Skinner. John Andretti was the only driver to lead both races here at Martinsville last year. Like he's going to position for Ward Burton out. Oh! oh and around Andretti. goes Andretti, and no caution yet. And here comes the leader off the second corner, and John cannot get the car righted. Right in front of the other second, third, fourth, and fifth. Right in front of Mark Martin. And Rusty Wallace had to take evasive action. As a matter of fact, Rusty lost three or four seconds to Jeff Burton, leader. So that puts John Andretti a lap down. Here's what happened over in turn number two. And Ward Burton gets a run coming off the corner and just a little bit of a bump. That's a very critical point coming off the turn there. They was almost losing traction anyway. And the Pennzoil copter can right there is the contact the nose of the car over the curb down in the grass throwing up some dirt on the racetrack and before john andretti can get the car going again he had lost a lap he falls in behind the 33 car of ken schrader which is running fifth and i said three or four seconds actually rushing off about a second and a half to the leader of the race and andretti has a pretty good race car Meanwhile, here's Chad Little and Dale Earnhardt. Chad Little, I think, was tied with Sterling Marlin for the fast time in happy hour. He's trying to get by Dale Earnhardt. That's a battle for 27. Actually, I think uh, Earnhardt has caught him, Benny, and trying, oh. to, trying to get by him. Looks like Chad bumped the wall coming out of town. Well, here are your two short track warriors for the past few years going at it for second place now as Jeff Gordon comes up on Rusty Wallace. Rusty, Jeff moves over. That's just kind of a, a to tell Rusty, I think I'm a little faster than you right now. How about if I try running in second spot? And Rusty, being the veteran he is, decided, hey, why don't I just let him move over and let Jeff Burton go to the end? Jeff Burton. So Jeff Burton has hung up in some heavy traffic again, been trying to lap Dick Trickle for about four or five laps now, and hasn't been able to do it yet. Ford's less than a second behind. Jeff Burton. Yeah, but that'll change. He's going to be a, a car length behind him when he get back to the start finish line, Bob. See, right there, he's yep. caught him. Burton is caught up in some heavy traffic. Still trying to put Dick Trickle a lap down. Might have it now. Yep. Now we'll be coming up on Steve Parker. This is a familiar sight.
fight. Remember last week at Bristol, Steve Park just put up a gallant fight to stay on the lead lap for many, many laps. Now, Jeff Burton will have to use up more of his car right here than he would like to in this heavy traffic. When he was out front there and no cars in front of him, he didn't. He could back off and not use his brakes, but now he has to use more of those brakes in this heavy traffic. some damage. Bill, what's going on? Well, it's a disappointing day for Ted Musgrave. Started 19, did crush the wall early, does have cheap metal damage. They don't believe it's scrubbing against the tire, but it has affected the handling of the race car. Obviously, when he pits, they're going to try and make an adjustment, including an air pressure adjustment on the right front. But right now, Ted, one of the guys, is, may end up having to battle from a lap or more down. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon climbs his way into the leader at work. Yes, indeed. Jeff Gordon able to get around Jeff Burton. <laughs> Jeff Burton trying to repay the favor because Burton was caught up on trying to get that by Steve Park the Benz oil car. And while he was trying to do that, Jeff Gordon got a run and took the spot away. Now Jeff Gordon's trying to try to pass on the outside. Looks like he'll be able to wow. do so. Here's how the lead change occurred. Coming off corner two down the back stretch. Gordon got that great run, got that great bite off the corner, accelerated right alongside Jeff Burton, took the spot away. Now here is some very heavy traffic. <laughs> they have really been dicing Ooh. it up. They still are. The 98 car is loose. That's Rick Mast. Nadu almost hits the wall coming off. Come on, come on. Whoa. Here's Ward Burton spinning around. Here's a replay of the near crash just a couple of laps ago as Rick Mass got into the back of Jerry Nadu, and now we have live a caution out for the spin involving Ford Burton. And John Andretti is trying his best to get that lap back and could not quite catch up. He even drove through the grass trying to catch Jeff Gordon. It was close, but he didn't make it. Now with 62 laps completed, we may see some pit stops here, huh? I would yeah. say so, yes. This time by, the pit road is closed. Now, remember, they enter the pits right here at the end of the back stretch, and the red flag waving there indicates it is closed. Next time around, it will be open, and we'll see what happens in this new pit road. Now, here's the Ward Burton spin up in turn four. He goes around, and Mike Skinner oh. just barely gets by Jeffrey Bodine. There we see it. Now, the leaders are going to come into this picture pretty soon as all these guys are trying to hustle back. And look at Ward just spins out right in front of the leader. And John Andretti down on the grass along with Steve Park. Both of them trying desperately to get back on the lead lap, but didn't quite work. Kevin LePage uh, was smoking before this uh, incident occurred. John Kernan. The hood is up on the 16 car. Tommy Morgan and the crew looking under the hood. What they think is it's a loose oil line, so they're going to try and tighten that up and hope it solves the oil leak. The oil leaking from a loose line onto the header pipes and causing the smoke. Now pits are open. Now all this long, long pit road. You see Jeff Ford coming around the pace car on the, on the racetrack, but they cannot pass the pace car. All those cars on the racetrack are lapped down. They're not allowed to pit until the next time by. But look at all these cars. Making the, we talked about congestion on pit road. We're going to see just how congested it's going to be as they make their stops and try to get out. Jerry Punch. All right, 4,500 RPMs. All the crew keeps reminding their drivers. Jeff Gordon did his pit stop. Four tires and fuel. No jet just right behind him. Rusty Walls will have a pound of air pressure out of three of the four tires. From pointing the car was getting a little bit loose entering the corner. Left side turn road. Gordon is out. Wallace is out. And now at 35 miles an hour, they will try to get back to turn two to get on the racetrack. Wallace beating Burton out of the pits, but a uh, little room back there. Jeff Bodine and Dale Jarrett just changed two tires, so they're going to gain a lot of positions on this pit stop.
looks like Terry Labonte's going to have to come back in. Oh, boy. That hurts. He'll have to be at the end of the line. John Kernan? And because they left that in, they bring him in. Hey, might as well change left side tires. They had only changed right side tires before that. Dale Jarrett, also one of the drivers who took on only right side tires, as did Jeffrey Bodine. So caution number two is out here at Martinsville with the leader being shown as Ricky Craven. Jeff Gordon is second, followed by Wallace, Burton, and Martin. We're talking rugged. We're talking fun. You ride the best in the job, get done. Buy a new Polaris ATV now, and we'll give you a 2,000-pound worn winch kit. Or choose $250 toward other Polaris accessories. See your Polaris dealer for details. Polaris ATV, we're talking tough. Showtime. All right, boys, that's up. Formula. No battery lasts longer. The durable, authentic khaki. You'll wear out before they do. Meet Chris Worth, animator. Knows good, knows evil knows that having a formidable partner is definitely good. Chevy S10, like a rock. You change your oil every 3,000 miles, right? Uh, uh, uh. No, do you? You push it. Now you're so busy, you try to squeeze another 1,000 miles out of your oil. Or more. Well, squeeze this. Just to do it yourself when you have the time. Reformulated Quaker State. Protection beyond 3,000 miles under any driving conditions. Anybody say insurance? It's been tested. And unlike that lazy uncle nobody really likes to talk about, it works. So go get some. Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? We're back to racing here in Marksville. When we went to break, Ricky Craven was shown as the leader. He had not pitted. He has pitted. And now Jeff Gordon is up front once again with Wallace second and Jeff Burton in third position. Here's our Coke pit summary showing you where the drivers were before they went in and where they came out. Rusty Wallace gained a position. Burton lost one. Sterling, or rather, Mark Martin stayed the same. Here on the second page, look at this. Jeff Rebodine from 20th to 8th. Dale Jarrett from 21st to 9th. I think they, uh, Ned Jarrett explained that. Yes. If we went to break, that these fellas changed right side tires and gained 20 positions by doing that. And Bill Elliott comes in for an unscheduled pit stop. And this is what we talked about earlier. When you make one of these green flag pit stops, boy, you're going to lose a lot of laps. Yeah, it's going to be very expensive. He didn't lose pit. He was one lap down. Now, as he leaves, he thought he had a right rear going down. So he has to come in and get it changed. But here comes the field off the fourth quarter and Bill has to drive clear around to the exit of turn number two before he can get back on the racetrack. There he is, but the field at full speed puts him a couple of laps down. And we've got a spin. Jerry Nadeau up in turn two, up against the wall. Didn't hit it, I don't believe, but the car spins up there. So far, he, we have no caution, and Nadeau will get the car righted again, but here comes the field off the corner. Ooh. Gets back on the racetrack just ahead of Gordon, Wallace, and Burton. See some damage to the left rear quarter of the car. Could be what caused the spin. 
Well, let's take a look at it, and we'll see who, if anybody, had some contact with him. Jeremy Mayfield's down on the inside, and there is a little contact, and around they do goes. I would guess that's exactly what happened to Jeremy Mayfield about 50 laps ago, 60 laps ago, was that in turn one, and in exactly the same spot. Gordon with about a half second lead back here in second and third are Wallace and Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton working on Rusty again. Remember Rusty Wallace won with a brand new car in Bristol last weekend and you would think uh, as a short track car maybe they would try it again but he instead has brought another brand new car. Martinsville. A lot of difference in the banking at Bristol and Martinsville, so many of them seem to run a different chassis concept. Uh, some run a low, what they call a low snout car on the uh, flatter tracks. They don't do that on the high banks of Bristol, so probably that would be one of the differences. Now well, they're both catching up with Jeff Gordon. Once again, the Pennzoil Copter Cam is providing this shot for you. Last lap, fastest car was Jeff Burton, and the slowest was Jeff Gordon. These guys up front and not particularly heavy traffic at the moment. But, oh, we have a big mess on the back stretch. Jeremy Mayfield is again involved. So is Joe Nemechek. And I believe the 98 car is the one down there against the inside wall. That's Rick Mast. Yes, indeed. Mayfield up on the outside. And the leaders come by, so Mayfield will go another lap down. I think Rick will go his first lap down. Wow, this is a race that Jeremy will try to quickly erase from his memory. He came into this race last year at this time, second in points. And this year is ninth in the point standings. And that car is just totaled almost already in the first 82 laps. Here's a replay. We're really in progress to see Rick Mast come in there and get into the 12 car, but there again, there was nowhere for him to go. Is that Ted Musgrave in the... I think it's Johnny Benson in the Cheerios okay. car. Might have made a little contact. You see Joe Nemechek at the very back of the screen. There we see once again. There we see the 26. Uh, he does make mm -hmm. contact. And that, I guess that's Dick Trickle that runs in the back of Ward Burton. And Nemechek slid down into the inside wall and flattened a couple of tires, but kept going. Here's the perspective of Kenny Irwin. This is the Rebecca's onboard camera. He comes off turn two and, oh, what's about slowing down? Oh, I see why everyone's slowing down. <laughs> oh, like a good job getting through there. Yeah, he got by. Here's Derry Coates on board. Parted and he was able to drive through. Down to John Curtin. Jeremy Mayfield's crew waiting for him to come back in. A lot of damage on that car. In fact, some of the duct work that goes into the radiator out of the grill has been bent. They may have to fix that just to keep him out there. But uh, it's been hit on just about every corner. And there was a lot of red paint stuck in the front grill. So I guess he got into the back of a red car. Mm -hmm. Well, not only is he lower in points in 1999 than in 1998, he is considerably behind, and his average finish has also fallen off from last year at this time. In 98, his average finish was 9.1. This year, 16. We'll be right back. Pepsi presents a Jeff Gordon moment. One of the most spectacular wins in Jeff Gordon's career happened at Bristol in 1997. Starting fifth, Gordon had his eye on pole sitter Rusty Wallace throughout the day. Waiting for his moment, the opportunity came on the final lap as Jeff Gordon took the checkered flag for the third straight time at the Food City 500. Another Jeff Gordon moment. Gordon is way behind. Stick a fork in Jeff. He's done. Oh, my. What is he thinking? Uh, Holy baloo. What the heck is that? Ooh, that's got to hurt. Well, what could possess a man to drive like that? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Gotcha. He's making his move backwards. Gordon wins. 
and we got to get him a couple. of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a stunning Chevrolet Corvette convertible. <laughs> Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? Need new shocks? Come to Midas. We'll save you 50% on your second R2 technology shocker strut with a lifetime guarantee. Go safely. Go Midas. That's me, Bill. Here we are at Super H. For reservations, call 1-800-800-8000. The faces a long pit road at a NASCAR Winston Cup race, keeping an eye on their driver, advising them what to do, communicating with them almost constantly during the event, trying to guide them through 500 laps of racing here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. Crew cam is being worn this week by Zippy Bob Tracy, who's the gas man with Rusty Wallace. Watch as he moves that can out of the way. The tire changer and carrier goes around for the left rear. He then he goes back in and finishes filling the tank up. Just that quickly, <laughs> Rusty completes the stop. And just that quickly, the green flag comes out and restarts green the Goody's flag, Body Pain 500. Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Kenny Schrader are your top five. Now, the last time on the restart, the lap cars have not been able to get to the front. They got up to about 10th place, but now John Andretti is the first car lap down, so he did go first. And so did a lot of others, which makes the traffic pretty heavy for those. And Rusty Wallace had a notion down in turn one. Looked on the inside of Jeff Gordon. I thought he was going to go. He's got about 11 cars that are off the lead lap right now and we have one car behind the wall a brake problem for musgrave bill absolutely bob very disappointing day they've got a lot of sheet metal damage on the front of the car and by the right front tire but the big deal here is that the right rear brake rotor was broken in that contact and also cut the brake line so they've got a lot of work to do back here before they can put the 75 back out on the track problems for the seven car john kernan Michael Walter has the engine shut off. He's sitting in the pit. The hood is up. They're going to put a new oil line on. And apparently, uh, they developed a leak. First, they thought it was just a loose fitting, and it worked its, you know, fitting, and it just worked its way loose. But now they're going to change the whole oil line. You can see where it was dripping a lot of oil down here on pit road. The crew working, but already losing lap after lap. So tough luck for Michael Waltrip for the Wood Brothers, whose long-time Winston Cup racing operation is not too far from here in Martinsville. And Joe Pinochet at this point being by a pit stop, so that's going to put him at least a lap down. In fact, he's being shown seven laps down, so that was a long stop. Well, the two Bodine brothers are running together, Fred in the 11, Jeffrey in the 60, and back there also is... Dale Jarrett is working his way toward the front after starting in 31st position. Brett is 9th, Jeffrey 10th, and Dale is in 11th. This battle's going on about five seconds behind the leader. As we noted, as Ned noted, on all the caution flag on the pit stop, most cars made the, their pit stop on the caution flag. Dale Jarrett and Jeffrey Bodine only changed right side tires. So trying to get some track position. And since uh, that restart after the, the caution, that caution when they changed the tires, both 
Sterling Marlin and Brett Bodine have passed them. Also mired back in some heavy traffic, the pole sitter, Tony Stewart, and the four car of Bobby Hamilton, the defending champion of this race. Ricky Rudd won the most recent race here at Martinsville last fall and one of the warmest days that we've seen in a long time. Plus, Ricky had the flu, but still drove the car to victory. Meanwhile, our pole sitter, Tony Stewart, is now in 13th spot. Tony Stewart, of course, has a lot to learn. This, he's visiting some of these tracks for the very first time, either in a uh, Bush car or a Winston Cup car. And he's been told that patience is a key here. Sometimes that's hard to do. But... Compare that with the fastest lap that last time, which was Jeff Gordon at 92.3. And there is Jeff Gordon, who's not in any traffic right now, with about a six-tenths of a second lead on Rusty Wallace. The lap car of John Andretti, who is actually 30th, is right behind second place Rusty Wallace between him and Jeff Burton, who's running third. Hamilton, Ward Burton, Ricky Rudd, and Jimmy Spencer in the 23 car. Jimmy Spencer, the Winston car, has been running well since Friday. The car was unloaded Friday, started practicing. 23 Spencer has been really, really fast. And teammates running together, in fact, look like maybe trading some paint. Mike Skinner in the 31 and Dale Earnhardt in the 3 car. They are running 18th and 19th. Now, Skinner's trying to get alongside. Oh, Whoops. he tries to turn under the Rich Bitch car. Cannot do it. Almost loses the back end. Now he's going to try it once again down in the corner. He finally has a good position on him. He will try to accelerate and does down the front stretch. Mike Skinner has fallen from the points lead to 11 in the point standings, but he is showing the most improvement in point positions of any driver from last year to this year. Up 20 spots from 1998. He goes back by Skinner on the outside. <laughs> There's not a lot of room for any of them to go anywhere. Talk about a recipe for race. Well, that's it, isn't it? That is it. Almost three abreast there off the corner. 75 car, by the way, of Ted Musgrave. The Polaris ATV4 Taurus is back in the race. We're on board with Kenny Irwin, and he's right in the middle of this, isn't he? Yes, he's trying to figure out how he's going to get there. And you wonder why his brakes, his rotor was so hot as Earnhardt just gets a little touch. You wonder why his brake rotor was so hot. This is why, because you're always on the brakes. You've got to go in and hit the brakes hard, otherwise you're going to run into the back of the car in front of you. He's going to get up. He's going to be able to pull alongside Earnhardt, who's up in the high lane. two they go got about uh, what 12 cars or so going two by two six rows two deep well here they're trying to go three deep <laughs> that ain't gonna work no i don't work. think so max skinner was right in the middle he didn't really run on in there michael walter van pitt musgrave are back out on the racetrack but many many laps down he felt going to be some 18 laps down Got somebody to race with the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> For a taste of the race, let's look at the brake pedal specifically here on board with Derry Cope as he's in this traffic. Boy, oh, he's all the way down to the floor, looks like. You know, one of the brake engineers told me this week that hitting the brakes at Martin and trying to slow this car down is like trying to push a 130-pound bag of sand with your foot two inches. Really? Yeah. Wow. A hundred and, now imagine a 130-pound pound sack of sand, and you got to push it two inches with your foot. That's what it's like every time mm -hmm. they hit the brakes at Martinsville. 
Jeff, Jeff Gordon will be coming up on that heavy traffic we've been watching there before too long. <laughs> now Labonte and Dale Earnhardt are pushing each other out there. Jerry, what's going on with you? Hey, Benny, that same Frank engineer told some of the teams what, what you just told the fans at all by pushing that uh, bag of sand two inches. Then he figured out what it would be for the entire race. He pushed that brake pedal a thousand times or twice a lap every 500 laps. you got to push a 120-pound bag 166 feet with your right foot this afternoon. That's going to make you awfully tired. And the reason they're racing so hard is because they know the leader is coming up behind them. They don't want to go a lap down. Some of those cars are already a lap down. And Rusty Wallace has said, oh, yeah, this is great because Jeff Gordon pulled out to about a second and three-quarter lead on Rusty Wallace, and that lead is going to vanish quickly as he tries to get through his heavy traffic. Yeah, where's he going to go? They're running side by side up there. Well, Jeff Gordon's not going to grow up on the outside and make it three deep. First driver he'll try to put a lap down is Dale, or rather, a Daryl Waltrip. And we continue to have this good battle back here in about the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st position. Irwin, Earnhardt, Wallace, all of them battling for position as the NASCAR Winston Cup Series is in action at the Goodies Body Pain 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia with 113 laps completed. 50 years of the greatest cars, the greatest tracks, and stock car racing's greatest heroes. Petty, Pearson, Yarborough, Earnhardt, Gordon. This is NASCAR. Now you can own NASCAR The 50 from ESPN Video. All the history, highlights, and horsepower of America's greatest sport in one incredible home video collection. This special box set features over five hours of NASCAR's golden memories and insider interviews available only through this 50th anniversary offer. If you're a real racing fan, NASCAR The 50 is a must for your home video library. Order this deluxe five-tape collection now and save almost $15. Call 1-800-717-ESPN and order NASCAR The 50 for just three easy payments of $19.99. An opportunity this special only comes along once every 50 years. Call 1-800-717-3776 now and own a piece of NASCAR racing history. There's only three things that you got to remember when you're shining the cup. It's this. Wax on, wax off, wax on. That was a trick question. You don't leave the wax on. There'd be a buildup. Ken Griffey Jr. Nine straight gold gloves, one dazzling bat. Watch one of the best swings in the game spark a long ball battle in Anaheim. Mariners Angels, the Sunday night game of the week, tonight at 8 on ESPN. Looking back at the leader of the Goodies Body Pain 500, Jeff Gordon, as he tries to put another lap on Derek Cope, pulling to the outside of him. Cope is already down one lap and now goes down a second lap. And our AutoZone Old Track Interval Report will show you, Benny, exactly what you were talking about, how Jeff Gordon's lead shrunk from 1.7 seconds down to a second, all because Jeff encountered traffic. We see he was running 20.7 seconds, and then when he ran across the traffic, he's down now to 21.2 seconds. Their second place, Rusty Wallace, now about 1.4 seconds behind. That's interesting. All that traffic that we were seeing run side by side as Gordon was coming up on them, they've singled out now. They finally figured out, hey, guys, we can go faster if we run single file and uh, maybe keep ourselves from getting left. The Wallet Dollar back has been left. 25 cars now on the beat lap. Rick Craven is in 25th position. Third place car belongs to Jeff Burton. Car lengths are so behind in fourth spot. And then Kenny Schrader has the fifth position at the moment. There he is in the skull car. He's about a second and a half behind Mark Martin. Ernie Irvin, the 36 MM star, right behind Schrader in sixth position. And the 40 car of Sterling Marlin runs in seventh while he's getting heat from Bobby Labonte, who's running eighth. Sterling Marlin's making a move towards the front. He was in 12th place on the restart. Now moved up to 7th, working. And there's the 11 of 
from Brett Bodine, and Bill Weber has more. Certainly a strong run for Brett Bodine. Started 14th when they came into the pits during that caution flag. He came in ninth, but went out 11th. They took 19 seconds because Brett had parked too close to the wall. They had trouble on the left side. They made an air pressure adjustment all the way around. But Brett has picked up those two spots on the track. Is back in ninth position. This team is very confident today. And one thing Brett said to me during one of the commercial breaks at NASCAR today is remember, all my Winston Cup wins have come in the month of April, Bob. <laughs> Only one, but it was in the month of April. And it was on a short track. Yep. North Wilkesboro, and we were there. Now Kyle Petty presents a challenge to Brett Bodine. Oh, Kyle trying to take the ninth spot away. Yeah, Kyle was back about 15th or something. Hey, I'm out there. The pit stop, so he's marching on towards the front. If you watch the NASCAR Craftsman truck race. Clear high. Good job, yesterday, baby. He was with us and told us about a uh, crash he had during a test down in Talladega. We'll have more about a little bit later. There is Jeffrey Bodine. He's running an 11 spot right now in the power team car. He is eight seconds behind the leader. Dale Jarrett started in 31st position, has worked his way up to 12th. He's about eight and a half seconds behind the leader. Benny, how could you let me get away with talking about the Wood Brothers when we were talking about Michael Walter a while ago? Did you hear me do that? Did you talk about Michael Walter driving that 21 car? Well, I talked about him in the same breath. I didn't necessarily oh. put them together, oh. but uh, I thought you would nail me, and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's our pole sitter, 13th place, Tony Stewart. Just being patient right now. Here's an Apple Field summary. Ford leading Chevrolet in the manufacturer's point battle by four. The Rusty Wallace is the leading Ford running in the second spot. Jeff Gordon, of course, leads the Chevrolet contingent with Schrader running in fifth. And Ernie Irvin, the best among the Pontiac drivers. Bobby Hamilton is running 14th. Jimmy Spencer is 15th. over a half a lap. And Ricky Rudd, last Paul's winner, is 16. Rich Bickle right behind him. He's still on the lead lap in 17th position. Rich Bickle's having a good run in this afternoon. We're 130 laps into this thing, and he's been very competitive as Mike Skinner, the low star, closes in. Up. Whoops. Oh, a little bit of bump. Billy Engle, by the way, serving as a crew chief on the Rich Bickle car. And John Andretti's trying to get his lap back. And right at the moment, he does have it. Gordon's not going to fight him. He got caught up in a spin and lost the lap. And they a while back, so now he's back on the lead lap. He gives himself a caution. He's being right back in this thing. He's in 25th position. About to take over 24th. And here's a battle for position, the sixth spot between Bobby Labonte and Ernie Irvin. Labonte trying to take that spot away and looks like he's going to be able to. Battle a couple of Pontiacs. Bobby Labonte has five top 10 finishes in seven races in 97, third in points. Last year at this time, he was 14th in points. Back to 17th as Mike Skinner gets alongside Rich Bickle, trying to take the spot away. I believe he's going to do it this time. Everyone's talking about the Duke Leach running. Mike, they were getting off the corners two and four and really didn't understand why. Some of these guys are losing that grip off the corner. We see as they come off the accelerate and lose the back end. Getting a little bit loose. But obviously Jeff Ford not having that problem. That's one reason he's driving away from the Now the sun is uh, getting out from behind the clouds here now at Martinsville. Here comes Gordon now with a 1.13 second advantage on Rusty Wallace. Jeff has led 81 laps so far. Jeff Burton has led 31. Mark Martin 17. Rusty Wallace 9. And Ricky Craven led one lap under caution. No multi-million dollar contracts. 
No victory laps. Not even a winner's circle. But if you think these weekend warriors who run the SCORE Desert Championship Series take anything for granted, think again. Which is exactly why they run with a Duralast battery from AutoZone. A battery so tough, so dependable, we back it with a two-year free replacement guarantee. The next time you hit the road, don't settle for anything less. I used to hate taking pictures. Somehow they didn't capture the real me. Then I realized what was missing. My smile. So I was happy I discovered this great new crest. It's a powerful new toothpaste with baking soda and peroxide whitening. The tingle tells you it's working while you brush to help keep your teeth and gums healthy and your smile bright and white. Now I'm always ready for a close-up. New Crest Baking Soda and Peroxide Whitening. The power behind a healthy smile. When you have an accident, you just want your car back the way it was. Fortunately, there is someone who's all about getting you back where you belong. Who? Who else? Your farmer's insurance agent. Want to know the secret of the spicy bowl porterhouse at the Palm Steakhouse? A1 bold and spicy in the marinade with a spark of Tabasco pepper sauce. Oh, yeah. A1 bold and spicy. The Steakhouse secret. NASCAR driver Jeff Burton goes head-to-head -head with everyday driver Eileen. My car has a 750-horsepower high-compression engine. My car has an engine. I can cruise all afternoon at 180 miles per hour. I'll stick to 55, thanks. I start my engine with a powerful Exide NASCAR Select battery. Me too. <laughs> thanks! The Exide NASCAR Select battery. It's not just for race cars. Getting the opportunity to be in Jerry Maguire, that was a real thrill. Quite a few of us auditioned for parts. Show me the money! Show me the money. Show me the money! You complete me. You complete me. Help me help you! Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Let's go! Who's coming with me? There were a couple of performances that really surprised them. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. The action is hot and heavy at Martinsville. Jeff Gordon is trying to put Dale Earnhardt a lap down, and while he's been trying to do that, Rusty Wallace is caught right up to him, so is Jeff Burton. He had Rick Mass and on it, Carl, a lap down, and as he got up there fighting with Earnhardt, Rick Mass was able to get him back by. Rick would be two laps down if Gordon got by him. He got uh, caught up in his spin earlier and lost one lap. Running back in 24th position and trying to stay on the lead lap. And right now, being successful at it, and here comes Wallace to try to retake the lead. And Jeff Ward might be saying, okay, Rusty, big man, you go up you there. You go up and do it, huh? Exactly, you go do it. <laughs> down so easily or get a fender in against the tire. A couple of laps ago, we'll show you what happened. Uh, it was quite a little incident here between Earnhardt and Gordon. There you see the contact. Then Rusty, then Jeff tried to go on the outside. Earnhardt just came up, pretended Jeff wasn't there. And we see Rick Mass get his lap back. And then when, that's when Rusty Wallace got up there battling. Now we're back to live action. Is Jeff Burton looking on the inside of Jeff Gordon. And now we'll see if Rusty has a better time of it. Now about for second spot is Jeff Burton drives on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Got position now. take second spot. First four cars running right together. Fourth place there is Mark Martin who looks to the outside of his Roush teammate and will take the spot. Now here's Rusty Wallace trying to put Earnhardt a lap down. 
Jeff Gordon was unsuccessful at that. Let's see what kind of success that Rusty is going to have. While they're battling up there, you can see the fastest car on the racetrack last lap was Kyle Petty. Mark Martin was second, and let's see, the 43 car of John Andretti, third. He got his lap back, remember, and... Uh, had just driven away yeah, from the lead. Right. He picked up over a quarter of a lap since he got back on the lead lap. Moved up to 20th. Once again, Kyle Petty is the fast man, and this time Andretti did not show up, so second was Mark Martin. Kyle's running back in seventh. Rusty's not having a lot of success putting Earnhardt a lap down, and here we see Bobby Labonte has caught Kenny Schrader. This is a battle for the fifth position, and Kyle has caught both of them. Here's Jeff Gordon back on the inside of Rusty Wallace for the lead. Someday, Rusty, you can't do it. Let me try it again. <laughs> Earnhardt looks up in his rearview mirror and said, go at it side by side, guys. I love that. He's able to pull away a little bit. Now, Rusty gets that great bite off the corner, pulls back into the lead. Jeff Burton just went by back by Mark Martin to take over the third spot, and Kyle Petty has moved to sixth. Passing Bobby Labonte. So Dale Earnhardt stays on the lead lap. Nobody's been able to put him a lap down. Well, he's a caution right now. He doesn't want to be part of it, but he'd love to see him. position away from Dale Jarrett. That moves Mike up to 13th. Bobby Hamilton is right there, too. He's running 15th. Once again, the sun has come out here. There's Bill Elliott, and he has lost two laps and is in 38th spot. He made that green flag pit stop and lost those two laps on the green flag pit stop, and that's where he's been. Gordon will try it on the outside for Rusty Wallace. This is for the lead of the race. That time by, Jeff Gordon was the leader. Meanwhile, he's going to have the nine car. Jerry Nadeau right in front of him. I'm talking about Jeff Gordon. Oh! Earnhardt got, I mean, the rest of got a run on Earnhardt coming off of turn two, got down to the inside. That should allow him to get on by, and it does. Three wide, though, coming off the corner. Earnhardt has now gone a lap down as Rusty is by him, so is Jeff Gordon. And there comes Jeff Burton and Mark Martin. So that puts 23 cars now on the lead lap. And look at Kyle Petty. He has caught Ken Schrader and is trying to take away the fifth position. Still there. Drives right down on the inside and does get the position. Schrader will come up there, but he can't get the traction up there. Player high. Reeling them in like a field dance, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Chris Osborne, the spotter with Kyle Petty, talking to him. Kyle Petty up to fifth position now. Bobby Labonte and Ken Schrader battle for sixth. 164 laps are completed. It's Rusty Wallace leading the Goodies Body Pain 500 with Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Kyle Petty completing the top five. There's a moment as I bite into a Wendy's classic double with cheese when everything around me seems to come to a stop. My senses focus on that hot, juicy beef and cool, crisp toppings. But that frozen moment all seems right in the world. Of course, nothing lasts forever. Then again, I can always come back tomorrow. Wow, this is nutty. Hamburger Bliss. It comes with every Wendy's classic hamburger. It knows two speeds. Stop and go. It just beat a series of the toughest stop-and-go driving tests in the world. 
and it's brand new. Go ahead. Guess. Guess. You have 4.3 seconds. Introducing Pennzoil with new Pure Base. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. This is great. I get fired on national TV. No, it could be worse. How could it possibly be worse, Frank? I think it just got worse. And now, Budweiser's replacement for Louis the Lizard. No. The Ferret! This is not going to be good for my blood pressure. He's good. Don't encourage him, Frank. Hey, Ray, those brake pads really did the trick. Great. I got a couple more things I need. Do you think you have these? Thanks. No problem. Hey, Jeff, can you get these for Dan? I'm on it. Hey, Dan, here you go. Anything else? Uh, no, I think this will do it. All right, Thanks, guys. I was fast to Charlotte. Yeah, I know. I was a little slow in that turn it off three. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Last time you made money in your sleep, you believed in the Tooth Fairy. But now, check into any Red Roof Inn with our coupon from USA Today and get $5 cash back. Plus, you get to keep all your teeth. Ooh, beauties. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF and save money like you mean it. Just a filter. Son, you put inferior oil filters in your engine, and it's not long for this world. Look, nothing stops more dirt than America's number one brand of oil filter. Fram. Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now or pay a lot later. ESPN resumes its coverage of the goodies. Body Pain 500 from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. You can do all kinds of negotiating in the pits, but sometimes things go wrong on the racetrack. These are some of the incidents we've had already in the first 172 laps of this 500 lapper here this afternoon. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But right now, things are going okay for Rusty Wallace. He is leading, but Jeff Gordon is trying to nudge him out of the way. And they've come up on some very heavy traffic once again. Gordon a little loose coming off the corner. Rusty will get credit for leading that lap. That's the 34th lap that he has led. Mark Martin and Jeff Burton are very close behind Rusty and Gordon. Rusty Wallace is getting great grip off turn, off turn two and four to come off from this time. Looks like Jeff Gordon will be able to take that spot away, and Rusty has trouble with Mark Martin on his inside for the second spot. And Kyle Petty continues to mow the leaders down. He is gaining on them every lap. position. He's only about 2.1 seconds behind the leader. That car has been very quick. Very, very quick. And one thing in his favor is Rusty and Gordon, all these guys have had struggling, been trying to get by this lap car. Kenny Irwin, Rusty Walls, was up just a few laps ago trying to put Kenny Irwin the Texaco car a lap down. And here's the name of Jeff Gordon got the spot back. Now Jeff Gordon turned to go up and try to put Kenny Irwin a lap down. John, the 88 is not having a good day. What's wrong down there? Bob, you remember at their tip stop, they decided to go with right side tires only to move up into the top 10 to get some track position. Well, that is more or less backfired as the more laps they run, the loose the car gets. DJ wants to pit early for tires, but they're asking him to please hang on, hang on, because we know if it's early under the green, he'll lose at least three or four laps, and then if the caution would come out, he'd have no hope of making up those laps. Not a good decision to take just those two tires, then. No, it wasn't. You no, know, Jeff Bodine took two. He's not too far up ahead of them there. He got through some traffic a little bit better than DJ there did a moment ago, and, and that's probably not the threat of going to lap down right now, but, but DJ certainly is. Kenny Irwin is running 22nd and is about to go a lap down. Now here comes Kyle up to challenge fourth place Jeff Burton. Kyle run like this, huh? This car is good. Still out there. That's Mark Martin trying to get by Rusty Wallace. They're side by side going in turn three. 
Jeff Gordon has been able to get by the 28 car off Kenny Irwin. If I tell you what, if Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff Burns, and Kyle Fetty keep racing like this, Jeff Gordon just drive away off into the sunset. The 66 and the 28 are battling for position. They're both a lap down to the leaders. So did Rusty Wallace. Here's Ernie Irvin trying to get her going again down the straightaway. So Jarrett was very, very close to going a lap down, but saved it. Very, very fortunate in two ways there. It happened right in front of him. He, he was able to get through it and then to not go a lap down. It's our fourth caution of the afternoon coming on lap 185. Here's a replay. See the damage to Ernie Irvin's left front fender. And right where the brake ducts are, let's see if we can see what happened to Ernie. Far left. Never see the leader. And looks like Jeffrey and Ernie Irvin got together. And we see DJ go on the outside. Russ, Darrell Walter, the 28 car goes in the outside. And they're trying their best to race Jeff Gordon back to the line. Another angle. Heads up going the outside, and I guess you got to give Jeff Gordon credit for squeezing by on the inside. And Mark Martin also. He's the one that drove up over the curve instead of Rusty. From Mark Martin's onboard camera, trouble up ahead, going to the left. Oh, he just gets through. <laughs> and now the pits are open, and we'll see what happens on pit road again this time. 35 miles an hour as Jeff Gordon leads them down. He and Rusty are pitted right together. And it's very punch. Gordon and Wallace pitting nose to tail. Jeff Gordon, no changes, four tires, two cans of gas, one round of bite in the car number two for Rusty Wallace. The car a little bit loose, left side tires. What a battle between pit crews here at Martinville. A tight pit road, they jump on the jack simultaneously. Let's go to Bill Weber. It's four tires to round out for Fred Bodine, who was tight. One nut to Ron Bodine is away. It's Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, going to come out of pit three, four. See Kenny Schrader, Bobby Labonte, Kyle Petty, Sterling Marlin, Mike Skinner. Great pit stop for the Lowe's crew. And here comes Fred Bodine, Bobby Hamilton, Steve W. And Tony Stewart still sitting there. And here comes John Andretti. Interesting to see now, Ned. He's back in the race. How he's going to be able to do this? I think he's going to do well, Benny, because he has a fast race car. Well, the Richard Petty owned NASCAR Craftsman truck won here at Martinsville yesterday with Jimmy Hensley behind the wheel. John Andretti behind the wheel of the Richard Petty owned NASCAR Winston Cup car. We'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment from Martinsville. He's the seven time NASCAR Winston Cup champion. The Gold Performance Mint announces the Dale Earnhardt Medallion Pocket Watch, honoring Dale Earnhardt's place in NASCAR history. This one-ounce silver medallion depicts Earnhardt as the Intimidator and is mounted in the hinged lid. His number three Chevy leaps from the back in carved relief. The face is emblazoned with the NASCAR logo and Dale Earnhardt's signature. Each Earnhardt timepiece comes with a silver chain, one-year warranty, certificate of authenticity, and this museum-quality dome display. 
you can own this Dale Earnhardt Silver Medallion Pocket Watch for just three easy payments of $19.95. Call now, and you can also own this Dale Earnhardt Jr. Silver Medallion Pocket Watch, honoring his 1998 NASCAR Bush Grand National Championship for the same low payments. Order both pocket watches and get this Motor Tracks phone card absolutely free. Hear live conversations between NASCAR drivers and pick crews during an actual race. Call now. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, a year-long celebration. Number 39, Walter Payton. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN, presented by General Motors. Back at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, all 80,000-plus seats sold for this race. The Pennzoil Copter Cam has the overhead view of the facility here. You see on the far right there, the railroad track is still right behind the backstretch. However, there are plans to relocate that and provide more seating back there. Well, later this afternoon over on ABC Sports, you'll be able to tune in and see the first road course race, actually a street course race of the year for the CART FedEx Championship Series, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. That's live today at 4 o'clock Eastern Time over on ABC. Greg Moore won the first race in Homestead. We'll see what he can do today in Long Beach. Four o'clock on ABC. Well, the concession stands are busy now with this caution out. Man, are they ever. That's not a bad idea. Let's run down and get a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> they do have good hot dogs and, and uh, barbecue here. Let's get an update on Dale Jarrett from John. Well, I tell you what, they were praying for a caution, and they got one at the right time. DJ staying on the lead lap. They took four tires. They also took a rubber out of the right rear, and they also loosened the left side in the rear by taking a pound of air pressure out of that left rear tire. So uh, they are very, very happy right now to be back on the lead lap. They think these adjustments will make the car run really well over the long run. Because remember, last time they took on rights only, and the car got very, very loose toward the end of the run. Falls in 18th in line. That's where he will be when we get the race restarted here in just a moment. Bob Tracy wearing the crew cam on Rusty Wallace's team. Here's how Rusty's pit stop went. This is the gas man. Puts the visor down and gets set for more racing here. He's running second to Jeff Gordon at the moment. It's Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, and uh, Ken Schrader running in the top five. Here's Jerry. Guys, keep an eye on pit road entrance up in turn three. Jeff Gordon and some other drivers were having trouble seeing the flagman up there where he positioned because he's got to make a commitment coming down the back to get into the pits. Because it was so much chatter with Ray Everham and the other crew members talking about that pit stop, Jeff couldn't get an answer whether the pits were open or closed the first time by. He almost came down pit road, as did Ross get everyone behind him, and the pits would have been closed. Well, evidently, they aren't looking for that person very well because that person's almost in the middle of the race track. Yeah, he's pretty prominent, at least for us. <laughs> Kenny Irwin, Ricky Craven, Ricky Rudd, Jeffrey Bodine, all those guys are a lap down and lined up to the inside as those on the lead lap. And there are now 20 cars on the lead lap or on the outside and get the green flag. Boy, Jeff Gordon wanted to get down into turn one first. Got down on the inside. Kenny Irwin was hoping to get a lap back, but he couldn't do it. Back 
for Rusty Wallace. Miller Light Ford. Rusty's finished sixth or better in 10 of the last 13 races here at Martinsville. He has won six times, most recently this race in 1996. Jeff Gordon has jumped three positions in the point standings. That's how they are at the moment. Tommy Hamilton up three. Ken Schrader up three positions. He's running fifth in the race. You know, our monitor's showing that right now Jeff Gordon is having some trouble getting around this racetrack. He's only running 91 miles per hour. Rusty, Mark, all the rest of them are running. Oh, that time he's up to 92, but they've been running almost 93 miles per hour while Jeff Gordon was running in the high 90 mile per hour range. And we see that Rusty Wallace has pulled in on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. Brett Bodine and Mike Skinner battle for the ninth position. Skinner bumping the one and getting hit from behind by Kevin Page. From the TV Guide sponsored car. Mike Skinner going to try to pass on the outside. Didn't work too well. Yep. than any other car in the top six. And we see he's pulled away by a couple of car lengths from Rusty Wallace. Maybe they had the air pressure a little bit too low in his car, and the first couple laps, he had trouble getting it up to speed. Good point. Jeff Gordon has led 117 of the 200 laps that we have run so far here at Martinsville. We'll be back with more in just a moment. I'm Steve Kirby. These are my mountains. I test emissions for Ford Motor Company. We're up here in the Rockies testing Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury sport utility vehicles. We're really concerned about the environment. Every SUV we sell this year is going to be low emissions. These vehicles average 35% less smog forming emissions than the government requires. 35%. That's really amazing. The government doesn't make us do this. We're doing this for my mountains. Better ideas driven by you. I think I'm gonna fall for that old trick. Not so good. All well, four barricades, huh? <laughs> Race to Pep Boys and save up to $30 on Gabriel's Shocks and Struts. Celebrate the Indy 500 with Pep Boys. You can mail in for $30 when you buy or have Pep Boys install for Gabriel Premium Shocks or Struts. Pep Boys. Cars like us. People love us. Gina Hopkins, who just won a million dollars using 1010345, doesn't need any help remembering our number. To help you, here are her third, fourth, and fifth long-lost relatives who surfaced when she's won. Dial 1010345 and you might win a million. Live coverage of the Goodies Body Paint 500 from Martinsville being brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Better ideas driven by you. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. 207 laps are in the books here at Martinsville. There are the top four running right there together. Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, and Jeff Burton. Then what, Jeff Gordon is running a, a different line than these other cars. Watch me he takes a DuPont car down in the corner, right on the bottom, but then he lets the car drift up. In the middle of the racetrack, we see Rusty Wallace keep his car right on that yellow line. And, and, and right now, Jeff Gordon is as fast as these other cars, so he's found something that seems to work for him. That car, that time, not quite as high as he has been, but you see a few feet higher than Rusty Wallace in the corner. Now, that time, Rusty is trying his line to see if it works <laughs> yeah. for him. Ben's oil copter cam following the top four cars for you around this half mile. Jerry has more on the Jack Roush effort. Up 
take the adjustments on the pit stop for Mark Martin initially. Uh, he was a little bit loose at the end of that run, so they made an air pressure adjustment on the left side and right rear tire to try to tighten the car up a little bit. Likewise, teammate Jeff Burton in the 99 car, they made a track bar adjustment as well as an air pressure adjustment in three of the four tires to tighten him up. And apparently it's working for both drivers, both much more pleased now than they were prior to the stop. Martin and Burton hanging back there in third and fourth spot. And then a little bit of, oh, there's Jeff Burton that just went around Mark Martin, so give Burton the third position. These two cars, the 6 and 99, sure seem to be even because they swapped that position third place several times today. Fifth and sixth, Ken Schrader and Bobby Labonte. The last car of Ricky Rudd is also on here. He's in 21st position. On board with Bobby. This is Circuit City on board camera. Now, just before that caution, Kyle Petty had come up and passed both of these cars, but Kyle lost some positions on the pit stop. There he is. And he's trying to catch him back again. Mentioned Kyle's testing crash at Talladega. The throttle hung open on him as he was coming in, and uh, no, no injuries. And he says he's going to run the car next weekend at Talladega. There's the 40 car of Sterling Marlin, who is running in eighth position. And how about Brett Bodine? Good run for him. Great uh, ninth position right now. The paycheck's four. Next would be Mike Skinner in the Lowe's Chevy. And the other Andy Petrie car is also on the lead lap. That is Kenny Wallace right behind the 31, and he is in the 11th position. That's car number one is Steve Park. He's a lap down right behind Kenny Wallace. The 60, the 16, and the 1, all those cars one lap down. Lap number 24, 25, and 26. position, Jerry. We told you early, Bob, how miserable they were yesterday in happy hour and how bad the car was running. Well, Greg Zipodelli and the Home Depot crew have really worked on this car early in this event. That last pit stop, they made another change of air pressure, added wedge, and the car has gotten closer and closer. Not where they would like it, but they're holding their own in the top 15, currently running in 14th spot. With one more adjustment, they may be able to make a move up into the top 10, but a whole lot better, Greg said, than they were yesterday in happy hour. Ned, I'm impressed with that young man. The first time here to Martinsville, we're almost halfway still in the top, in the lead lap in the top 15. Very impressive run to come. Yes, it is an impressive run, especially with all the traffic they've had to go through. And talking about traffic, here is uh, Jeff Gordon in traffic again. Elliot Sadler in the Sitgo Ford down on the inside. The Wood Brothers car. Yeah. <laughs> Taste of the race as we check out the telemetry. Jimmy Dean Sausage. Well, he's on that brake a lot, isn't he? Yes, they are on that brake a lot. You see him up to 8,900 RPM because they got to run a lot of gear, a lot of got to turn the engine a lot of RPM to try to help slow the car down when they back off the accelerator. There goes Rusty around. Speed from down in the 60s up to about 117. That's a lot of acceleration in a short time. And braking. <laughs> Not like John Force and them do, but uh, still, it's, <laughs> these cars as heavy as they are, it's a lot of pick up in speed. All those running up front, passing by Derek Koch, who's back in 38th position, now three laps down. 
We're nearing the halfway point of the Goodies Body Paint 500. Stay with us for more. Jeff Gordon is right now leading. You've really been wanting a satellite dish, haven't you? You want all the sports, you want all the movies, but you're concerned about the costs, the programming, the installation. Hey, come into Radio Shack. Yeah, we'll explain everything. And now an RCA Direct TV system is down to $149.99 with three free months of programming when you subscribe to Total Choice. Even free installation and no long-term commitment. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Get ready. They're here. The most precious metals are about to arrive. Stand back, boys. Introducing Racing Champions Precious Metal Series Limited Edition Collectible Diecast. In gold. In 24 karat gold. And platinum. NASCAR collectibles so unique they could only be called precious metals. Better get your hands on them before we get them all. Racing Champions Precious Metals and Originals. There's a new series to collect every month. Available at your favorite retailer. The big pressure coming in from the west. That's gonna bring in all the bad, great big sunshine. That's your big forecast. Now get out there and make it a big day. It's easy to spot someone who rides a Yamaha Roadstar. With its huge 1,600cc engine, it's more than the world's biggest B-twin cruiser. It's, a big stuff. it's perfect for those little rides into town. It's a big stuff. Wanna spend a weekend with Rusty Wallace? the trunk it's gonna be a long weekend get a game piece and packs of energizer batteries then watch the race on espn may 15th if your icon matches the one on tv you're heading to the races with rusty when they say the world wide web it really is worldwide this is something that this guy had uh that he sent it along to me um this is a pakistani uh birdie um it was from the pakistani badminton team and so i got that i gave him a drew bledsoe uh football they have no idea who Drew Bledsoe is, but um, they wanted to make the trade. And I was just like, fine, I'll take that if you want just a Drew Bledsoe football. I got those like a dime a dozen. Caution is out here at Martinsville. An incident coming off corner number four. Nothing real serious, but it has caused the caution and another round of pit stops. the caution. See Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, go in the corner behind Jimmy Spencer. Spencer's going to be the car that spins, and I guess there's the reason why. A little contact with DJ, and Spencer goes around. DJ is able to get by along with Chad Little, but we see Bill Elliott and Johnny Benson. Benson runs in the wall, a little contact with the wall, and, and Bill Elliott stops. Let's see if he makes very much contact with Johnny Benson. This is the McDonald's onboard camera. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's the reason for the fifth caution of the day. 231 laps complete right now. It is Kyle Petty being shown as the leader here at Martinsville. The kids come first. They're always on your mind. They're always first and foremost there. I'm Cynthia Hodges. 
I work at Ford Motor Company. I'm an engineer, and I'm also a mom. We're the people who buy and use the Windstar. We know what it's like to have kids, and that helped us design this car. It's full of ideas that moms will love. I'm able to open the doors, and they're not blinded by dome lights. Because you never want to wake a sleeping baby. That allows me to listen to the music I like, and my kids can listen to what they like in the back. My mom's favorite type of music is old stuff. This sensor is really smart. The beeps get faster as you're about to back into something. Parents always want the best for their children. The safety rating. Safety was the utmost importance, and the five-star rating was a big deal. I designed it for my neighbors. I designed it for my playgroup. I designed it for what's now become a part of my life. Hey, my mom built that car. Better ideas, driven by you. Sometimes you just got to get it done, no matter what. I, mean, I don't care what they tell you, you can plan all you want, but you still got deadlines. Sometimes you need extra equipment, a dozer, a bigger excavator. I'll tell you who saved my neck a time or two, Nation's Rent. They got what I want, they get it to me when I need it. It's newer and it works. I can count on these guys. They get it done for me. Nation's Rent. 1-800-NO-SWEAT. A little chicken music, please. Thigh bones connect to the wing bone. Wing bones connect to the groove. Hold it, hold it, stop the music. There's no bones in my crispy trip. Just juicy white breast meat, freshly prepared. A real meal. And this crispy strip meal is just $2.99. Bones, not included. At KFC, we do chicken right. No bones, no bones, no bones at all. No bones, no bones, no bones at all. Well, I live out here on a little old farm. I got a pickup, two tractors, a mower, and a little old boat. Never start battery in every one of them. One in that old pickup's been in there over four years. Starts right up every morning. Ever start. All the cold cranking power you'll ever need. No matter if it's 100 degrees or zero outside. Starts every time. Ever start. The name says it all. Everything I got come from Walmart, except my wife and the milk cow. And if they had a place, I'd put a battery on them. laps under green but now we are under caution once again as Rick Mast spun down in turns three and four bringing out our sixth caution of the afternoon here's how it happened see the red car with no sponsor on the very bottom of the racetrack he goes up and gets a little bump from Derek Colt with a Jimmy Dean sausage car and around goes oh and a little contact between Rick Mast and Derek Cope as Cope drove by on the grass. And the entire field going by on the outside. In the meantime, Kyle Petty took two tires last time, did lead four laps, and that's the first time he has led a NASCAR Winston Cup race since Atlanta in November of 1997. We'll take a quick break and be right back. I've won my share of races, but I didn't do it alone. It takes a great team. And Slick 50 is a part of my team. I'm one of the millions of people who rely on it. Now there's Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic Engine Treatment with a 100,000 mile limited warranty and pour and drive convenience. It's hard to beat Slick 50. I count on that. Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic, the next generation of engine treatments. And for peak performance, use Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic Fuel System Treatment. What sets some people apart? gives them the confidence to succeed on their own terms. It's no secret, it's the Wall Street Journal. Now you can have that confidence delivered for 13 weeks at just $36.75, just 57 cents a day. That's a 25% savings off our regular rate, which makes now a great time to try this limited time offer. Call now, 800-356-9800. That's 800-356-9800 for the Wall Street Journal. Listen to the prophets. Faith predicted it all. Max attack on the home run record. Roger Clemens, fifth Cy Young Award. Immerse yourself in the last season of the century. Watch baseball tonight on ESPN. Speak to me, old prophets. Speak to me. Would you like to win a trip to the Brickyard 400 and drive the race parade car home? Here's how. Just follow Steve Park and enter the ESPN Drive at Home Sweepstakes, presented by Pennzoil. Keep watching for more details. Drama continues to play out here at Martinsville. Robin Pemberton has been watching Rusty Wallace. 
And Ray Everham has been wringing his hands watching Jeff Gordon. Right now, as we're just about set to go back to activity, the crew members completing their work. It is Rusty Wallace who has the lead of this race. Second is Jeff Burton, then Jeff Gordon, followed by Kyle Petty and Mark Martin. From Derry Copes on board, this is why we're under caution. Going in turn three, the Jimmy Dean Sausage on board. Oh, a little contact there, and he goes through. It's hard to say how much damage there was on the right side of Derry Copes' cars. As he drove by, we see Derek back and forth. This will be a program that you'll want to watch, folks. Monday at 6 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN, a special presentation of Up Close. Roy Firestone sits down with Wayne Gretzky, one of, if not the greatest hockey player ever, who's playing his last game today. They'll talk about the glory years in Edmonton, carrying his sport on his shoulders, and where the sport will go without his presence. 6 o'clock, Monday night on ESPN, a special presentation of up close. Bill Elliott getting ready for a restart. Kenny Irwin. There's Tony Stewart as he's lined up right behind John Andretti. Andretti 15th and Tony Stewart 16th. He's, we keep seeing that brake runner on uh, Tony Kenny Irwin's car. You see it's not red. It's just nice. It's cooled off. In about two laps, will be cherry red. What is that, a hot dog wrapper? Yeah. <laughs> Green flag comes out, we go back to competition. I shouldn't have thrown that wrapper out a little bit ago, should I? <laughs> That's for sure. Watch your hot dog wrap your chicken bones. last weekend but failed to win a short track race for the first time in seven years last year now jeff gordon also moving to the inside of steve park meanwhile kyle petty's in jeopardy of losing the fourth position jeff burt pretty racing right now man yes he is he's coming up there to challenge rusty Jeff has led the most laps in three races so far in 1999, but he has only led 31 here this afternoon. Rusty has led 48, coming up on 49, and so far Jeff Gordon has led the most, 144. Man, look, you're trying to get alongside Rusty Wallace. Can't do it. A lot of Virginia fans, of course, cheering for Jeff Burton here this afternoon. And he is right on the back bumper. Jeff Burton had led a lap today. Yeah, he's led uh, 31. Oh, you know, Jeff Burton is really strange. We saw the flame coming out the exhaust pipe on the right side of his car. You think that he and Mark Martin are probably exactly the same? The exhaust pipe comes up on the left side of Mark Martin's car. Hmm. I don't understand what the difference is. If there is a difference. There it is interesting since they come out of the same shop. Exactly. Coming up on the halfway mark, this completes lap 249. Next time around, plus flags will indicate halfway, 250 laps, and 10 grand will be here. That's why Jeff Burton's working so hard. <laughs> hey, oh, ran over the curb, trying to get on the inside of Rusty Wallace. He lost ground rather than gained it, though. Yeah, he's not going to get the 10 grand. Rusty's going to get it. If he's eligible, I assume he is. There's the halfway point. Here's our Bud Race recap. Rusty Wallace out ahead in 52 of the first 249 laps. We've had 13 lead changes, six cautions for 37 laps, and the average speed a little over 74 and a half miles an hour. Here are the drivers who have led at least one lap. Kyle Petty led four there by taking two tires, and then also under caution early in the race, Ricky Craven led one lap. And as far as cars out of the race or even off the track, zero. Everybody's still running. 
since Kyle Petty lost another position. I don't think that two-tire change is working today. We saw it earlier. Didn't work for a couple of drivers. Even though Kyle has run about 20 laps less on his left side than Jeffrey Bodine and Dale Jarrett had earlier, but still looks like it's uh, got a good track position, but cost him in speed on the racetrack. Did get to five bonus points. Yep. Led some laps. He raced that long streak of not leading a race, dating back to 1997. Well, Brett Bodine and Bobby Hamilton are still racing together out there for the 12th position. Whoa, we got Ward Burton spinning. He's got to sit there while the entire field goes by. No caution yet. Here comes the leader. Oh! Now caution is out. You know, that Ward Burton was really, th I thought he was going to turn right down in front of the leaders, but instead he spun the car around to the outside wall, away from trouble. That a boy, Ward. He was running back in about the 23rd position a lap down, but now he's going to lose more ground. Yeah, it'll be two, two laps down now. Let's see if we can see what happened. He was right at the top of the screen on the outside of someone. And here we see the whole field go by. Looks like it was Jeffrey Bodine he was running beside. Yep. They make contact. And around Ward goes. Robert Preston does a good job of turning left and getting by. I believe if Ward Burton had been there, Jeffrey Bodine would probably have spun out. Another caution out here at Martinsville Speedway as Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton, and Jeff Gordon continue to hold down the first three positions. Back in a moment. New York, the Big Apple. Hey, you guys think you got games? You got nothing. Home of the number one world champion. Biggest and the baddest fleet. Ah, you ain't got nothing. You call that a squeegee? You call that a kiss? I'm going to be late. Get a hotel room. Ever wonder why New Yorkers have such big mouths? You got nothing. Because we eat big pizza, like the big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. 16 inches of real New York pizza dripping with cheese at a very un-New York price. $9.99. What do you think this is? Indiana? The big New Yorker, new from Pizza Hut. It's beautiful. Crew set. Everybody's ready. Let's go. Here it comes. Let's hit it. your way to the fastest finish. You're good. You're fast. Half the lunch, we'll do the other side of the street. Make sure you've got genuine sheetrock. USG Sheetrock brand products. Official marketing partner of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Edgar and I have so much in common. It's like we were long-lost brothers. We both have larger than average ears. And we both have pretty straight hair. It's creepy. And get this. We both love the taste of Miller Lite because of the choice hops. It's like we were separated at birth. Uh, actually, George, I think Miller Lite tastes great because it's smooth. Excuse me? I like the, the smoothness. Who are you? Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. That's a Fillerton suspension bridge. At the strength to weight ratio of those arches is 1,000 to 1. And the support cables are tungsten wrapped with zirconium flex plates. They'll easily support the weight of this bus. Okay. So, what are you? Some kind of structural engineer? No. But I did stay at Holiday Inn Express last night. How does it look? I'm not gonna lie to you. It doesn't look good. You got a broken crankshaft, a stuck valve, and a tremendous buildup of gunk. I should have used a Fram oil filter. Nothing stops more dirt and engine-damaging particles better than America's number one brand of filter. <laughs> I guess I'm paying for it now. Try and be strong. Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now or pay a lot later. For extreme driving conditions like stop-and-go traffic or towing, try Fram Tough Guard. Over on the hill behind the back stretch is a salute to ESPN. What's that say there on the bottom? I can't read that. It says, uh, hey, BP. Oh, is that what that says? Oh, okay. How'd you like to slip in that tent last night, huh? <laughs> Man, it's been a little chilly, I think. Yes, it would have. Part of the 80,000-plus fans that have gathered here at Martinsville today, taking a break to go back to the concession stand here during this caution. Better get up to your seats, folks, because we're going green here before too much longer. 259 laps 
are in the books. One of the three cars on the lead lap that made a pit stop here, Bob, they were Terry Labonte, Chad Little, and Dale Jarrett. Now, it's been about 26 or 27 laps since they made the last pit stop. John Kernan? Dale Jarrett came in, took on four tires. They made a track bar adjustment. The car just a little bit too tight, so they made a track bar adjustment to loosen it up a little bit. So those guys at the back of the uh, lead lap. It's a tenth season on ESPN. It's Sunday Night Baseball. It travels to Anaheim, California, where the Seattle Mariners will take on the Anaheim Angels. Ken Griffey Jr. hit his third home run of the season to lead Seattle to victory last night, while Anaheim looks to revenge. Sunday Night Baseball, 8 o'clock tonight, only on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Here we go. Green flag, green flag. So the Marlins worked his way up to the sixth position to four is white, Chevrolet. Right behind the Kansas Ranger there. All cars still running. The last time all cars were running at the end of a race was at North Wilkesboro in September of 1996. 30 co 37 cars were in that field. Jeff Gordon looks to the inside of Steve Park himself between second place Jeff Burton and third place Gordon. That changes as Gordon passes him going into turn three or five two. And once again, Jeff Burton closes in right on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace. Now maybe on the outside? Nope. Uh, Points battle going on in the Manufacturers Championship. Ford on top right now by 10. Wallace, of course, leading the Ford contingent. Jeff Burton. In fact, we got three Fords in the top 10. And there are four Chevys in the top 10 and five in the top 11. Three Pontiacs in the top 10. So pretty equally divided. And Rich Bickle in ninth position. Great run for Rich. Trying to match that great run he had here last September. Very emotional run for Rich Bickle, in which he finished in fourth, started fourth and finished fourth. And you mentioned earlier that Bill Engel is the crew chief on that car now, and of course Bill Engel is crew chief on Ricky Rudd's car when Ricky won that race here last year, so pretty good combination there. Right now I'm seeing faster speeds on our computer than I've seen all day on the 93 miles. We have got, got Bickle in a crash. And oh, and Kenny Irwin is up on the backstretch wall. We've got Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip, Jimmy Spencer all involved in this incident on the backstretch. Rich Bickle's involved. We were just talking about how great things were going for him. He might not be hurt too bad. I think he's going to be able to stay in the lead lap. But Kenny Wallace won't, uh, Kenny Irwin won't be able to because he can't go anywhere. Tony Stewart is also going to stay in the lead lap. He was able to get his car headed in the right direction before the field came around. But here is what happened. And see Spencer goes up and tags the 28 car of Kenny Irwin. He gets tagged behind by Jeffrey Bodine. And, and Rich Bickle really had no place to go. He might have got touched by Mike Skinner as Good he slowed down. Now from the Haviland onboard camera with... Kenny Irwin. This be a while, right? Boom, right there. <laughs> and up on the wall. Now, how did I get up here? <laughs> hmm. Tony Stewart, the Home Depot onboard camera. That's the one car we didn't see spin just a moment ago as he follows John Andretti off the corner. Oh! Ooh. Little contact with Andretti, and the nose is banged up on this thing. We see Michael Walker. Another car spun. We didn't see in our first angle. There's see Spencer right here. Oh, got up on the curb, and when he came back on the track, he got a little loose. And we did see the 31 yep. hit the 45 car. <laughs> 45 <laughs> that car get up on the wall there. Mm. That's a relatively low wall. Mm-hmm. 
So it's going to be a while before they can get that car off the back stretch wall. Meanwhile, we'll take a break and be back with more in just a moment from Martinsville. Well, guess we dug up my garden again. Bad dog. Bad, bad dog. Getting ready to do some fishing? Enter the Hooked on Napa sweepstakes and you can win a nitro bass boat, a $5,000 shopping spree from Bass Pro Shops, or one of over 6,000 deluxe fishing kits, plus save on hundreds of items. Stop by a participating Napa Auto Parts store today. Remember when ice cream cost a dime? And your best friend and your bike were all that mattered? Well, those days are back. For a limited time, get a Yamaha V-Star from just $89 a month. It's the Yamaha Turn Back Time sales event. So see your local Yamaha dealer today. Because you won't find a deal this good anywhere else. Some of the most common odor problems in cars are caused by pets. Food. And smoking. But now there's Odorex, new from Turtle Wax. Odorex sprays directly onto upholstery and carpets. Odorex encapsulates odors, eliminates them, and leaves you with a clean, fresh scent. It's not an air freshener, it's an odor eliminator. New Odorex from Turtle Wax. Use it in the home, too. Odorex. Let me give you a little driving lesson, okay? Vehicles have changed. They're bigger, they're faster, they're a lot more than just a fashion accessory, okay? And guess what? The way you drive has changed, too. So why are you still using your old motor oil? Doesn't make sense. These are Quaker State Synthetics. 4x4, high performance, ultra premium. Made for what you drive, where you drive, the way you drive. They've been tested. For pure maximum protection, there's nothing better. I think it's time for an oil change. Quaker State, sensible technology. What more do you need to know? It is more than sport. continues here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia with the Goodies Body Pain 500. Under caution once again, 272 laps are completed. Tony Stewart was involved in the most recent incident, and what do you do when you have hood damage? Take it away. <laughs> Take it off. Yeah, that's a good idea. Aerodynamics are not so important on this race track. By the way, the 28 car, which was up on the wall, well, it's down off the wall and still in the race. Now the 18 car came in, and they raised the hood on the car, Doc. What's going on? Well, Bob, the problem was they got some debris underneath the car, some rubber, and it took these belts off. This is the alternator belt here, and what happened was it ripped it, frayed it, came off. It also took the power steering belt off, and it got some debris beneath the oil pump belt. They came in, raised the hood, they put a new oil pump belt on, and they put, uh, but they do not have a power steering belt beneath the hood of the car. They're going to come back in and try to get Bobby Levani back on pit road. You obviously hear with these tight turns with need power steering, we are just uh, over the 270 lap mark, so almost 227 laps to go. A long afternoon. He comes back in, the interstate battery will go back over, clean the windshield, and now they will change tires. It could have been worse if they had gotten the oil pump belt completely off. They could have locked the engine up with no oil pressure. He is down at the right side tire and away. So an effort for both of the Joe Gibbs cars to stay in contention here this afternoon and stay in contention for the championship. We'll be back with more live coverage in just a moment of the Goodies Body Pain 500. The Hardy's All-Star Racing Team Collector's Cup, featuring all seven members of the Hardy's Racing Team. Martin's coming in for an unscheduled pit stop. It holds 44 ounces of your favorite beverage. Even if you can't. Get your collector's cup now at Hardy's, a proud sponsor of the Roush Racing family. 
people say in the town of Flatwoods, the most exciting thing to do is sit around and watch the paint dry. Especially when it's Bear Premium Plus only from the Home Depot. It's going on so smoothly. Nice color. It's 100% acrylic. It's like putting a plastic shell on your house. And since Bear has a lifetime guarantee, these people know they won't be seeing this much excitement again for quite a while. Bear Premium Plus, the premium paint for the Home Depot price. You've really been wanting a satellite dish, haven't you? You want all the sports, you want all the movies, but you're concerned about the costs, the programming, the installation. Hey, come into Radio Shack. Yeah, we'll explain everything. And now an RCA Direct TV system is down to $149.99 with three free months of programming when you subscribe to Total Choice. Even free installation and no long-term commitment. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. <laughs> you need that change, I gotta make a call. This change? Yeah, that change. Oh, this change over here. Frank, have you forgotten about 1-800-COLLECT? Yeah. Well, I guess I don't need change. Right, and 1-800-COLLECT's cheaper than dialing zero. It'll save a buck or two. Go ahead, make your call. You mind moving your butt? Which butt? My butt? <laughs> oh, this butt. Let's go, move it. Say butt! <laughs> 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. There are hundreds of lawn mowers to choose from, with a broad range of quality features designed to meet your needs. But the ones that have the edge to do the job right have one feature in common. A powerful, high-performance Briggs & Stratton engine. Make sure your lawn mower is powered by Briggs & Stratton, the power in power equipment. NASCAR Winston Cup racing today from Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. You can keep up to date on everything that's happening in all divisions of NASCAR. If you log on to www.nascar.com, NASCAR's official website, you get real-time information on what's happening during the race. And when there's no racing going on, you can get the latest news and statistics. NASCAR Online. Here we go, back to green. Hey, Kyle, get ready. Rusty Wallace's worst nightmare on the inside is Dale Earnhardt. Trying to get a lap back. But Rusty really accelerates and gets down into turn one first and gets down on the inside. Oh, and Earnhardt goes to the corner very, very wide and does the four car Bobby Hamilton and Hamilton's left front tire is flat. It is flat. Oh, what a tough break for him. Mm. He was running in 11th position. And now he has to make that dreaded green flag pit stop. 35 miles an hour all the way around here. The winner of last year's race here will not win this year. Has to come down at 35 miles an hour while everybody on the racetrack is running at about 90. Here they come. So he goes a lap down. Rusty stretched out his advantage to over a second over Jeff Burton. Well, Burton had cleared Earnhardt yet, maybe he has now. Just did. hands to do so, as he did earlier in the race. So Jim Gordon is running in third place. You see Dale Earnhardt is certainly not going to give him all the grief that he gave him the first time to go. The first time we saw this battle, Jeff Gordon was the leader. And right now the leader, the first two cars are by they'll earn our so there's no point in really struggling with these guys back to the Robbie Hamilton lost two laps on that uh, pit stop of course he only changed two tires or maybe just changed one tire trying to clear Earnhardt. Meanwhile, Sterling Marlin is having a very good race. Up into fifth place. Been able to get by Kenny Schrader. There's Kyle Petty, who's running back in seventh. And right behind him is another guy having a terrific race, Kenny Wallace. Squirty Chevy is running in eighth position. right behind him. However, Bill is three laps down, running back in 34th. 
Elliott's the one that had a flat tire as well, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That was early on, and he lost two laps and then lost another lap on the racetrack later. Brad Bodine is still on the lead lap in ninth position. Brad having a great day, and he needs it. Good to see him doing so well. run up front like Kyle Petty and Kenny Schrader and Kenny Wallace and Brett Bodine running very well this afternoon. It is. And DW is still on the lead lap too. That's right. He's running in what, the left position. Yeah, he lost a lap early in the race but then got it back during a crash and has been able to stay on the lead lap ever since. And right now Mark Mark trying to get on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Uh oh, took a look, took a look on turn four, not quite able to do it. Once again, down in the corner, Jeff Gordon gives him room. Battle for third. Never seen the exhaust out of Mark Martin's car off the left side, the same plane that we see out of the back of Jeff Burns' car, only this time on the other side. Perhaps see more of that flame on this racetrack than any other because they're off the gas for so long. And all gas running in there, they're able to burn it for a little bit. Mark Martin was the short track champion in 1999. When you consider points earned. 98. 98, should say, yeah. We talked about Jeffrey Bodine having his 50th birthday today. Jack Roush had his 57th birthday yesterday. Sterling Marlin closed in on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. That time by Sterling Marlin was a little bit quicker than Jeff Gordon, about two tenths of a mile per hour. And the 99 car, Jeff Burton, currently in second spot, was a little bit faster than the leader, Rusty Wallace. Just a little, but a little faster. race currently at his top performance fifth about 3.3 seconds behind the leader and they'll have to make at least one more pit stop Trying to check out on the Points as of now. Mark Martin up a spot. So is Jeff Gordon. Bobby Labonte down two. And Rusty Wallace, the leader of the race. Bobby Labonte currently 17th as a result of those pit stops under the caution. a few moments ago. Let's show you him. And as by the old DW. All the cars are going by the picture. Let's see Bobby Labonte. Here comes Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton. Here's Schrader. He's back in sixth spot. Kyle Petty goes by and right behind him, Kenny Wallace. And there comes DW right in front of John N. Freddy. There he is. About that. Good run for Darrell. And we saw how good John Andretti, the STP Pontiac, was earlier. Darrell Walker, the big K Ford, has been in front of John Andretti for the last 10 or 15 laps, and John has not been able to make a move on him. Darrell Waltrip has more victories here at Martinsville than any other driver. He has 11 wins and 48 starts, leading the category. He also leads in several other categories, 27 top fives, 31 top tens. He has the best top five finishing percentage and has led 32 of the 48 races that he has participated in. He'll be with us during our live coverage of the IROC race next Saturday from Talladega. Jeff Gordon's now moved back into third position, but he'll get by Mark Martin, and we see Sterling Marlin is right on the back bumper of Mark Martin. 
mentioned how we'll have a live IROC race next Saturday at the conclusion of the telecast here this afternoon. Stay tuned to ESPN. We'll show you the first race of IROC 23 from Daytona International Speedway. It was the first combat between Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. on American racing soil. Three hundred laps completed now, two hundred to go as Rusty Wallace is looking for his second consecutive victory here in 1999. Burton, Gordon, Martin, and Marlin are the top five. I've won my share of races, but I didn't do it alone. It takes a great team. The Slick 50 is a part of my team. I'm one of the millions of people who rely on it. Now there's Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic Engine Treatment with a 100,000 mile limited warranty and pour and drive convenience. It's hard to beat Slick 50. I count on that. Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic, the next generation of engine treatments. And for peak performance, use Slick 50 Synchron Synthetic Fuel System Treatment. When it comes to building a comfortable home, you certainly have your options. weather out, comfort in. And that's basic to better building. Only ESPN Classic lets you pick what you want to watch Sunday nights. Just log on to ESPN.com on the Go Network and vote for the week's classic click and pick event. This week, log on and click Choice 1 to see Richard LaKing Petty take to the pavement in the 81 Daytona 500. Click Choice 2 to see Earnhardt and Urban in the 200 mile per hour sprint to a surprise finish. Log on for even more classic click and pick choices. Then tune in next Sunday at 7 to see this week's classic click and pick game on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC-NOW. This is a sport where the work of weeks and months is measured in hundredths of a second. This is a sport where glory and fortune can all come down to a gallon of gas. This is a sport where fans buy seats they never sit in. And they couldn't be happier about it. This is a sport that truly revolves around its fans. In fact, the drivers even go door to door to get the fans to come to the track. This is NASCAR. Moved in that second spot. He's only about a second behind. Rusty Wallace and cutting it down each lap as Rusty has gotten in some very heavy traffic again. At Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, it's the Goodies Body Pain 500. Rusty Wallace leads. Jeff Gordon has taken second from Jeff Burton now. And Rusty Wallace is, it appears, closing in on the leader. On lap 3.02, he was 2.4 seconds behind, and on lap 3.06, 1.3. Rusty got in heavy traffic. Of course, Gordon now is in that same traffic, so Rusty might be able to pull away and open that up again. There you see Kenny Irwin is still in the race. His car got up on the backstretch wall during one of our incidents. However, the car wasn't damaged, and he's back in the race, although he is seven laps down running in 39. of that lap traffic now he set this side on rusty wallace he's got a, one, a little over one second depth to make up there's sterling marlin who's in fifth spot kenny schrader back in sixth spot good run for kenny schrader today right behind him. That's Kenny Wallace. He passed Kyle a couple of laps ago. Now Kenny Wallace is seventh. Showing the battle scars, but hey. That's what you expect here. Mark right. <laughs> His only career top five was here at Martinsville in September of 1994. He finished fourth. Remember, remember when Kenny Wallace sat on the pole here at uh, Martinsville. Well, I'm told that Daryl Walton, that 66 car that he's driving today, is that very car 
that Kenny Walsh used to sit on the pole. Caution is out. We got a car up against the wall in turn four. 98. Yes. Besides that, there's a big piece of debris on the racetrack. So Rick Mast. Ooh, look at the damage to the left front of that car. Yep. Not good. Rick's had a tough day here today. He has. I'm caught up in several encounters on the racetrack. This is our ninth caution of the afternoon. And I would guess these guys will make a pit stop. Pits yeah, are they're, closed. They're going to have to make, go 185 or so laps from here on. Maybe they could go that far on gas. I doubt it, though. See if we can determine what happened to Rick Mass from our speed shot located underneath the starter stand. Let's check out Bobby Labonte's onboard camera. We see Chad Little and John Deere car right beside Rick. Oh, and Chad gets sideways when he cracks it. He goes up and nails Rick Mass in the left rear quarter. Mass car is just sitting there while those on the lead lap do come in. Rusty leads him down at 35 miles an hour. John Kirby. Four tire change. Once again, no adjustment. They're very happy with the way the car is running. In fact, about 10 laps ago, Kenny radioed in and says, hey guys, the car just picked, seemed like it picked up a lot of speed. Now to Bill Weber. We expected to be just four tires and fuel for Rusty Wallace. He likes the way his car is handling. Just 27 yellow flag laps and only 58 green flag laps on these tires. They cannot make it to the finish. Right in front of them, Gordon is getting his windshield clean and four tires. Jerry punch. Track fire adjustment on the right rear of the car number 99 trying to tighten up. It's a miss. It's a spike. Right in front of him, the car number six, his teammate, Mark Martin. No change. Four tires. It'll be six and 99. Those are the two Ross cars exiting in turn two. They will exit behind the 24 and the 2. Here comes John Andretti. Oh, and then poor Sterling Marlin got killed on that pit stop. He came in in fifth spot, or I think fifth spot, and he's going to go out about 10th or 12th. Mm -hmm. Some congestion also as the 2 and the 24 came off the pits. Well, what classic pit stop. What classic. Just almost even. They came in even. They go out even. And Rusty <laughs> just, oh! He says, I'm going on the outside. <laughs> and, and fortunately for him, Jeff Gordon gave him the room to get by. Well, the disabled car of Rick Mast is now being towed back into the infield area as 317 of 500 laps are completed. Today we're going to learn the easy way to mow the lawn. This is a lawn. This is a boy. Lawn. Boy. Lawn. Boy. Lawn boy. Easy, huh? Lawn boy. Easy to start. Easy to use. Easy to maintain. Any questions? Why are there two of you? With the blade set nearly, those first ice boats had a lot of speed, but not a whole lot of control. Oh, geez. Learn the hard way. Wider is better. With its speed-sensitive steering technology, the White Track Grand Prix gives you precise cornering and control. Better air, better. Wider is better. The White Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Now you can lease the Grand Prix GT sedan for just $2.69 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. Ken Griffey Jr. Nine straight gold gloves, one dazzling bat. Watch one of the best swings in the game spark a long ball battle in Anaheim. Mariners Angels, the Sunday night game of the week, tonight at 8 on ESPN. We don't get many shots up there. We get one shot, we're on the ice. You gotta practice, you gotta practice good. Let's go! Nice, nice. Breathe, boys, breathe. Hey, what about the fan? What are you gonna do? Very nice, very nice. Now do it again. Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, ESPN welcomes you back to live coverage of the Goodies Body Pain 500 being brought to you by Lawn Boy, making mowing easier. By the Wide Track Grand Prix by Pontiac, wider is better. And by Energizer Advanced Formula, no battery lasts longer. 
Under caution here at Martinsville because of an incident down in turn four involving Rick Mast. Now, Benny talked earlier about how pit work is an orchestrated ballet. Look at this. Yeah, check and <laughs> jump the hood on that 28 car with a jack in his hand. Out of the pits, we showed you the uh, tight squeeze that Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon had. Just ahead of him, however, is the 40 car, and they lost a lot of positions in the pits, Bill. And you can see them scrambling just in that freeze frame there, Bob, on the right front. The front air gun broke on the 40 team's tire change, so they had to continue the change with the one air gun and then send Sterling back out, and that's why they lost all that time in the pits. And it dropped him back to 15th position. Man, man, what a great run he had going. And here's our Coke pit summary that shows it. Everybody there uh, in the top four were okay, but Marlin from fifth, losing 10 positions back to 15th. Well, while we were under caution, the 18 car of Bobby Labonte led four laps. Make that five laps, so he gets five bonus points. Back with more in a moment. Showtime. No battery lasts longer. NASCAR and Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse both started from humble beginnings. But you made us bigger. You made us better. You made us faster. So consider this a quick thanks. Sure beats the heck out of a thank you card. Lowe's. Official sponsor of the number 31 NASCAR Winston Cup stop car. It knows two speeds. Stop and go. It just beat a series of the toughest stop and go driving tests in the world. And it's brand new. Go ahead. Guess. Yes. You have 4.3 seconds. Introducing Pennzoil with new Pure Base. Stop. Go. Hands on. What's it like to bite into a Wendy's Classic Half Pound Double with Cheese? Man, this is weird. Wendy's, it's Hamburger Bliss. Need new shocks? Come to Midas. We'll save you 50% on your second R2 Technology Shocker Strut with a lifetime guarantee. Go safely. Go Midas. Want to know the secret of the spicy bowl porterhouse at the Palm Steakhouse? A1 bold and spicy in the marinade with a spark of Tabasco pepper sauce. Oh, yeah. A1 bold and spicy. The Steakhouse Secret. Deliver great quality time after time. Same, Same with Super, Super 8. 8. Every room is comfortable. <laughs> and roomy. Super 8. Super 8. <laughs> Life's, Life's great. great. It's Super 8. 8. Back under green here at Martinsville. We were cautioned for nine laps. Rusty Wallace continues to hang on to the lead. Gordon, Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, the top four. There's Rich Bickle running his fifth. Finished fourth here last year, and he's running fifth here this year. He made an awful great pit stop. Maybe he just took on two tires. We understand that is the case. He took on two, but he's pulling away from Kenny Schrader right now. Schrader in sixth place. You mentioned Bobby Labonte, how he led laps to get uh, the bonus points. Then he made a pit stop and lost a lap, so he's back in 25th. But probably pretty good strategy on his part to get some points. Yeah, he thought he was probably going to lose a lap anyway because he was out there with no power steering. And they decided he was going to have to lose a lap to 
to be able to put a belt back on the power steering. So why not get those five bonus points? They're going to give up so many points. Try to get the maximum they can. Rusty Wallace from September of 92 to April of 96 had eight straight finishes of third or better here. You saw just a second ago that he has six victories at this racetrack, hoping to make it number seven here today. But we have seen throughout this race about four cars, the cars that are running up front right now, pretty equally matched. They have been the class of the field. There's no doubt about it. Right now, it looks like Jeff Gordon's car has been adjusted. Looks like every time those guys have gotten the way Jeff wants because he's now running that same line that everyone else is running. You see right on that yellow line, which you think would be the fastest way around. Have we seen that somewhere before? They didn't get it adjusted <laughs> late in the race. Seems like this story has been played out many times before. Here's a Hardy's field summary. Wallace again, the best of the Fords. Four Fords in the top ten. And we have four Chevys in the top ten. There's two Pontiacs in the That's the mathematics that I... That is Rich Beckman and Kyle Petty. <laughs> Ricky Craven got knocked around a little bit out there the last lap. He's back in 33rd position, three laps down. That was about a triple ricochet when he got knocked <laughs> out there. Because about two other cars bounced off each other to get to Ricky Craven and knock him out side of the outer groove. Craven has led a lap here. He led one circuit under under caution. Here's a good battle between Kyle Petty and Mike Skinner. Skinner has the eighth position. Kyle wants it. And looks like he's going to get it as Skinner drifts up the hill and uh, Kyle Petty gets on the inside, gets that preferred line. He's got a nose on him. Skinner will have to let him give him room to run down there. second this race back in 1991 he was a terror on the flat track back in the early 90s at rockingham he ran so well down there and, and uh here and wherever the flat tracks were he was tough see dale jerry coming on the outside trying to take a spot away from skinner that would be for 10th For ninth. My, yeah, Mike there. Skinner needs to get back on track here. Boy, he started off this season in good shape with two fourths and two sixth place finishes. And then, since then, it's been kind of downhill with a 32nd, a 42nd, and a 21st. But Mike is back in the top 10 here this afternoon. Good lap, 36, meter of 40. And they come off that corner high, don't they? Got to use all the racetrack to get the maximum speed out of these cars. Once you come off front right up, get that outside retaining wall. Soil Copter Cam following this battle for ninth position. See, Kyle Petty has driven away from them since he got around the Skinner. Kenny Wallace closing in on Rich Bickle for the fifth position. Kenny Wallace been able to get by his teammate, Kenny Schrader, move up to that sixth spot, and now, as you said, close in on Bickle for fifth. Johnny Benson Cheerios car. Yeah, he's got smoke. some smoke. Yes, it's like sir. a tire rub, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, it's just happening in the corner, so I think it is a tire rub, but you don't want a whole lot of that here at this racetrack, or any racetrack for that matter. Gonna cut that tire down. And there again, the flames coming out the exhaust pipe. All those Jack Ross cars that flame out the exhaust pipe. Rusty Wallace with the lead, but it's only just a couple of car lengths, and once again, Rusty coming up on some heavy traffic here. Approaching the 350 lap mark. And just now, Rusty Wallace has 
led more laps than Jeff Gordon. Rusty just led his 145th lap. Jeff Gordon has led 144. The battle for the ninth position continues between Skinner and Jarrett. But for right now, Mike Skinner has that spot. The top ten, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, Rich Bickle, the second five, Kenny Wallace, Kenny Schrader, Kyle Petty, Mike Skinner, and Dale Jarrett. You know how to put money into your IRA, but do you know how to take it out when you're 45, 60, even when you're 80? Without the right strategies, thousands, even tens of thousands, of your retirement dollars could end up going to the government. That's why Solomon Smith Barney created this retirement distribution kit. It's yours free when you call 1-800-EARNS-IT, extension 5600. In it, you'll find the best ways to take money out of your IRA at any age with a minimum of taxes and penalties. You'll learn the differences between Roth and traditional IRAs and find ways to keep more of your other retirement dollars too, like special tax treatments for some of the investments in your 401k. Whether you're two years or two decades from retirement, you need strategies for keeping more of your money, and you need them today. Protect your retirement starting now. Call 1-800-EARNS-IT, extension 5600. Let's get to work. Solomon Smith Barney. Getting the opportunity to be in Jerry Maguire, that was a real thrill. Quite a few of us auditioned for parts. Show me the money! Show me the money. Show me the money! You complete me. You complete me. Help me help you! Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Let's go! Who's coming with me? There were a couple of performances that really surprised them. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. There's a lot more to working in AutoZone than looking up parts or ringing up sales. And it has to do with taking pride in taking care of customers. Like testing an old part before selling a new one. Or simply having what they need when they need it. In other words, it's about taking care of people who take care of cars. And that's what we do best at AutoZone. NASCAR driver Jeff Burton goes head-to-head -head with everyday driver Eileen. My car has a 750-horsepower high-compression engine. My car has an engine. I can cruise all afternoon at 180 miles per hour. I'll stick to 55, thanks. I start my engine with a powerful Exide NASCAR Select battery. Me too. Thanks. The Exide NASCAR Select battery. It's not just for race cars. NASCAR Winston Cup Marathon, we call the Goodies Body Pain 500 here in Martinsville. 353 laps old, Rusty Wallace with a slight advantage over Jeff Gordon. And speaking of marathon, it's 103rd running of the Boston Marathon at 11.55 Eastern Time tomorrow morning on ESPN2. The runners following a 26 and a half mile point-to-point -point route. The Boston Marathon only on the deuce tomorrow at 11.55. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Isn't that some human race for 26 miles and the horse does it for a mile and a half? They think they've done something. <laughs> but I can't drive for 26 and a half miles without getting tired. <laughs> Let alone running. As you see, Jeff Gordon is there right on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace. He's been looking outside, been looking inside. Meanwhile, two car lengths behind Jeff Gordon is Jeff Burton. Gordon keeps the pressure on. They're about to come in on some heavy traffic again. We have a new player in this battle for ninth position. It was Mike Skinner and Dale Jarrett a while ago. Now we've got John Andretti right up in there. And Sterling Marlin is right there also. Remember, Andretti has come back from a lap down to do battle with top ten contenders. And some good racing here. Terry Labonte. Well, I can't keep up with it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Battle for the lead. Gordon's on the inside trying to get there. The crowd comes on their feet. And 
Rossi gets that great run off the corner and remains in front. I think right now that Jeff Gordon is probably a little bit better than Rossi, but a little bit, you have to be a whole lot better to pass at this racetrack, not just a little bit. Lost several laps early in the race. Now he's 19 down in the 41st position. He broke a great talent off the right rear. That was very early on in the race. Just that last lap.
the racer this afternoon, Martinsville. On Tuesday afternoon, Rusty Wallace came to Martinsville, flew up here just to look at pit road, ride around pit road, and get a feel for what was going on so they can make some decisions on how to choose their pit and exactly what was going to happen in today's race. We talk about kings of the short tracks. Well, in the last 21 short track races, Jeff Gordon would have to be considered such. He had seven wins, five seconds, two-thirds, two-fourths, and a fifth. If you consider 1998, the king of the short track was Mark Martin. If you consider in the 1990s, the short track king is Rusty Wallace. <laughs> And those three are among the top four here this afternoon. It's Wallace, Gordon, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Rich Bickle. The top five here at Martinsville. He's done. Oh, my. What is he thinking? Oof. Holy balloon. What the heck is that? Ooh, that's got to hurt. Well, what could possess a man to drive like that? Oh. Oh. Gotcha. He's making his move backwards. Gordon wins. Well, we got to get him a couple. Order a Team Denny's Burger and a Coke, you could win $25,000 and a trip for four to the Coca-Cola 600, plus a chance to meet one of the drivers. So come into Denny's for your own pit stop. Our enormous Team Denny's Burgers, starting at $3.99. Good food and lots of it. So start your engines and drive on over. Just a filter. Son. You put inferior oil filters in your engine, and it's not long for this world. Look, nothing stops more dirt than America's number one brand of oil filter, Fram. Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now, or pay a lot later. Last time you made money in your sleep, you believed in the tooth fairy. But now, check into any Red Roof Inn with our coupon from USA Today and get $5 cash back. Plus, you get to keep all your teeth. Ooh, beauties. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF and save money like you mean it. You're born... You die. In between, you work on cars. We should all be so lucky. Tenth caution has just come out here at Martinsville. Chad Little spun around in turn number two, kept going, but it was enough to bring out the caution flag. Also, while we were away, Jeff Gordon got the lead from Rusty Wallace. As a matter of fact, Rusty is back to third as Jeff Burton was also able to get around. So now we're set up for another round of pit stops here. The pits closed at the moment. Next time around, they should be open. And they should be able to go the rest of the way now if there are no other cautions. It was going to be questionable before, but now no question but what they can make it on fuel. them around at about 41 miles an hour. And here's what happened up in turn number two, and it was not too far ahead of Jeff Gordon, the leader. It sure wasn't, and all that smoke did had to be a concern for Jeff. Yes, it did, and Chad Little was the one making all that smoke. From the Jimmy Dean Sausage on board camera. Oh, had a little bit of help there, didn't he? Hmm. Hope had to go on to the curb. John Kernan, they're headed toward you. Kenny Wallace hits his pit. It'll be a four-tire change in fuel once again. No chassis adjustments, no air pressure adjustments. They're really satisfied with the way the car is running. To Bill Weber. Gordon is on pit road. Wallace is right behind him. Gordon's a little loose. No adjustment. Rusty was getting loose off the turn. One round of fight. The right sides are on the 24 and on the 2. They both come around to the left side. Remember how tight this was getting off a of pit road earlier. Gordon's away to Jerry Bunch. Raj's teammates, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, pitting in the in between turns 1 and 2. No adjustment to either car. Left side tires. Martin is out of the way. Here goes Burton. He will be side to the right in front of the 43 of John Andretti. Everybody had to slam on the brakes before heading out of the 
with it because the field hadn't gone by yet. And Rusty Wallace is true. Had some trouble, I think, with the left side on his car. It's going to cost him two or three positions on the restart. John and Grady made a great pit stop. Don't know if he just changed two or not, but he gained a lot of positions. He was back there in uh, the back there in the left position and now it's fourth. Yep, he comes out in fourth position. It's going to be Gordon, Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, John Andretti, and Rusty Wallace. Look, we go back to green. With the blades set nearly, those first ice boats had a lot of speed, but not a whole lot of control. Oh, geez. Learn the hard way. Wider is better. With its speed-sensitive steering technology, the White Track Grand Prix gives you precise cornering and control. Better air, better. Wider is better. The White Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Now you can lease the Grand Prix GT sedan for just $269 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. Want to spend a weekend with Rusty Wallace? Trunk. It's gonna be a long weekend. Get a game piece and packs of Energizer batteries. Then watch the race on ESPN May 15th. If your icon matches the one on TV, you're heading to the races with Rusty. There's a boy outside. His name is Jeff. He wants to know if I can Exceptional credit limit, visa acceptance for purchase power. Daddy? You can really use. At Pep Boys, get four of our 35,000 mile tires at a low $99. Or double your mileage with four 70,000 mile all season steel belted tires, just $169. Pep Boys, cars like us, people love us. We're here with grades three, four, and five to help you remember 10, 10, three, four, five long distance where calls are always 10 cents a minute. So what's that number? 10, 10, 3, 4, 5. Excellent. Dial 10, 10, 3, 4, 5 today. McDonald's will give you the Corvette. What you do with it is up to you. The excitement of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a stunning Chevrolet Corvette convertible. <laughs> Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? Getting set for the restart as ESPN is back at Martinsville Speedway for the Goodies Body Pain 500. And following our race here this afternoon, you'll be able to see the first race of IROC 23 from Daytona International Speedway. Here comes the green flag as we go back to competition on lap 389. Turn four is Bobby Labonte. 
No caution yet. They're going to see if he can get going. Looks like he will. Leaders are coming around now. He gets it going. Pretty good damage to the right front on Bobby Labonte's car. All it turns when he gets down to turn one. It does. Labonte going two laps down. Now back to Bill on the 43 car. John Andretti took just two right side tires for the 43. Just two right side tires. He's right in front of Rusty Wallace. Rusty lost some positions on pit road because Bill Wilbur, who changes the front tires, literally could not see the mud guns on the right front because of all the brake dust. <laughs> Jeff Burton that time took a look on the outside of Jeff Gordon down in turn one. This time he tries to get on the inside, ran into the curb. And John Andretti looks like he's going someplace pretty well. And that STB Pontiac just rides. And once again, Burton tries the outside. Gordon has now led 162 laps, and he has now led 1,003 laps here at Martinsville in his 13th race. And Jeff Burton, he's looking on the inside. There's Gordon. room there. Gordon giving him room. Let's see if Jeff is able to take advantage of it. Looks like he's going to. Jeff Burton going for the lead. Oh, Gordon awfully close to the outside retaining wall. Jeff has led 31 laps earlier, but he's back in the lead for the second time this afternoon. By the way, during that most recent caution, Brett Bodine led two laps. Give him five bonus points. Jeff Gordon does not want to give it up, but finally put Jeff Burton in front. Jeff Burton grew up in South Boston, Virginia. Probably about uh, 70 or 80 miles here in Martinsville. Penn's Oil Copter Cam has the first four cars. Well, we have a battle going on here between the 55 and the 44 with Sterling Marlin looking on, and that is for the ninth spot. And they're right behind Mike Skinner, so Skinner's in eighth position. Sterling Marlin looks on the inside. Mm, the whole close in a hurry, though, didn't it? Yes, it did. There we see Rich Bickle, who was running in this spot. He's, He's now back in 12th spot. Another Hardy's field summary showing you the point standing as of now. Tony Stewart moving into the top 10 in points. Stewart has had a bit of a struggle here, but he is uh, in 19th position at the moment, one lap down, starting from the pole here this afternoon. And the Urban up four, Elliott up two in the point standings. Henry Mass, the big loser, loses four points, four spots. Kenny Wallace, plus four. Race. Yeah. Uh, Rick Mast, he is 16 laps down. He's had a tough afternoon here. But again, all cars are still running. All 43 still out there on the racetrack. We have less than 100 laps to go. Kyle's using all the racetrack, isn't he? Yes, he is. Right on that yellow curb. Now these guys are driving offensive and defensive. They're trying to take advantage of the driver in front, the car in front, but they don't want to leave an opening for the driver behind them. Kenny Walsh is going to try a little higher line, see if he can get a better grip off the corner. of this group we have dale jared and kenny uh, kenny schrader in sixth and seventh bobby labati when after he's finally he came back amongst the leaders there he's hanging right in there Bobby's two left down now in 25th position kenny schrader has finished in the top 10 the last four races here in the spring of martinsville and is on track to do so again. Started 20th, finished 20th at Bristol last week. Started 6th here this 
afternoon, his best start of 1999. Seventh, it is that much racetrack up to the leader. 91 laps to go. Jeff Burton is holding on the leader, and Rusty Wallace takes away the fourth spot from John Andretti. So now we've got Burton, Gordon, Martin running third, Rusty to fourth, and John Andretti in the fifth spot. Second top five, we've got Ken Schrader, Dale Jarrett, Mike Skinner, Rusty, rather, uh, Kyle Petty, and Kenny Wallace. Those are the top ten. The NASCAR Winston Cup race from Martinsville, Virginia, has less now than 100 laps to go. And we'll be right back. really did the trick. Great. I got a couple more things I need. Do you think you have these? Thanks. No problem. Hey, Jeff, can you get these for Dan? I'm on it. Hey, Dan, here you go. Anything else? Uh, no, I think this will do it. All right, great. Thanks, guys. I was fast to Charlotte. Yeah, I know. I was a little slow in that turn it off three. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Yeah, they stink. But with a new Sony Digital 8 Handycam with stamina battery power, they can stink for up to 10 hours and still look great. 8 millimeter is gone digital. What's it like to bite into a Wendy's Classic Half Pound Double with cheese? Man, this is weird. Wendy's, it's hamburger bliss. Hey there from Plank Road. When you're drinking beer, occasionally you come across an ice house that has been prematurely abandoned. This is a tragedy, or what we like to call a pinger. Tommy, is this your pinger? No. Barney, did you ping? Mm -mm. Barty. Where's your beer, Mark? Get the mug of shame. <laughs> what can we say? Out here, our world is beer. Still going. I've had marriages that didn't last this long. At Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, the pit crew members wait for these last final laps, occupying themselves, and the XI crew is hoping that they can bring home another victory here this afternoon. That's Frankie Stoddard, the crew chief for Jeff Burton, who is the leader right now, but by just a couple of car lengths over Jeff Gordon. Jerry has more on Burton. Guys, Jeff Burton won the Winston Cup event here in the fall of 1997, and that day, that win allowed Ford to claim the Manufacturer's Championship, but arguably the most memorable Martinville victory was not in Winston Cup. It was back in 1990 when Jeff Burton won a Bush Grand National Race at Martinville driving for legendary driver slash car owner Sam R. On that day, he took the lead with a few laps to go to go to victory lane. But my best memory and Jeff's best memory was watching his wife-to-be, Kim, jump two different pit roads and sprint the length of Martinville Speedway to be with him in victory lane that day nine years ago. I remember that race very well. You worked that race, didn't you, Benny? Were you I, in victory lane? I was the, yes, I was. I was, so. I was with Kim on the back stretch when he took the checkered flag and <laughs> she ran by like a deer from the back stretch. <laughs> Jumping to the wall. It was a sight to behold. Rusty Wallace takes over third spot from Mark Martin. This battle is almost two seconds behind what's going on up front.
As we watch this, it's going, I think it's going to let them catch the leaders because the leaders in heavy traffic. Monday at 8, 6 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN at 7.30, I should say. It's up close. Roy Firestone has the sit-down interview with Rain, Wayne Gretzky, who is playing his final game today. They'll talk about all of his years in the NHL, possibly the greatest hockey player ever. That's at 7.30 tomorrow on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Have a seat. Jeff Gordon has caught the 99 card. Jeff Burton. The traffic has allowed him to get right on the back bumper. Now, can he do anything that he's there? Burton likes that being able to pass on the inside. As Johnny Benson just moved up, gave him the inside groove. already for oh. Jeff Burton. Uh-oh, here comes Gordon. Burton got in the corner a little bit too oh. hard. Jeff Gordon could not get off the corner to take that spot away. <laughs> Two slippages in the same corner, and they remain the same. However, watch Jeff again. Gordon, that is. You have to be careful which Jeff you say. Because <laughs> both Jeffs. Well, right now, Jeff Burton has moved up the racetrack. Look, he's moved up the racetrack to try to run a different line to try to get off the corner. He's afraid that, that Jeff Gordon is going to pass him on the outside, so he moves up the racetrack and is trying to get that good run off the corner. He's concerned about this traffic now and trying to use that traffic as well. Pretty smart move by him. See, now he's ready to run on the outside as Jerry Nagel goes down and move and let these guys go on the outside. Jeff Burton was ready to go up there and knew what his car was going to do up there. You're right, he's getting good traction up there now. Yes, he found out he's getting some good traction. And right now, when he... Passing these cars on the outside, looks like he's a little faster than Jeff Gordon. Elliot Sadler goes another lap down. He's now four laps down in 29th position. There was a time here you could be four laps down and be in the top five. <laughs> yeah. That's been a while, but no more. Now both these cars running in the same tracks. From the David Green automobile. Kodiak car right in front of the leaders. And another up and down day for the 88 car. He is up to sixth position right now. where he started, but he has been as low as 37th. He started 31st. He uh, has been as low as 37th, and right now at the highest point of the afternoon. He took the lead down that uh, Burton has on him to, to about four seconds, then he got in some traffic, and now he's about a little over five seconds behind. wins in the last 13 short track races for Dale Jarrett. Seven top threes and nine top fives. Let's check our suspension cam here on the 28 car and see what the brake... Well, they're still glowing red, aren't they? That rotor is still red. Look how red it turns when he goes down in the corner. Now as he comes left off the brakes, it does cool somewhat, but he still stays cherry red all the way down that's a rebessus onboard camera but it still has brakes that's amazing it is. that he has, has heated those things up that much here this afternoon i wouldn't have thought when we saw it early in the race i didn't think he could do that for 500 laps and still have brakes remind you you ever been in an old blacksmith shop 
and they heat, heat yeah. up that iron to, to uh -huh. bend it or shape it however they want to do. That's the way that looks there right now. It looks like you take a hammer and bend that any way you want to, but I don't think you could. <laughs> so that's a different kind of metal than what this blacksmith was working on. It is amazing that they're able to keep brakes as red as that rotor has been all day, as hot as it's been all day. Back, meanwhile, up front. Burton moving through traffic nicely. Past the 77 car, Robert Presley on the outside, and just turn left and pass Jerry Cope on the inside. Now, Jeff Gordon's hung behind these two. This is going to cost him a second or so. Yes, it will. It'll cost him big time. Gordon moving to the inside of Cope. But Jeff Burton has stretched out the advantage just a little bit here. 438 laps completed. We're winding down the circuits at Martinsville. Presenting the first USA PGA Tour Titanium MasterCard with a 3.9% APR for the first six months, just 9.99% thereafter, and a credit limit from $5,000 to $100,000. Think what it could bring you. Green Speeds, $116. Graphite Shaft Clubs, $877. Balls, tees, $36. Hole in one. And a witness, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's the first USA PGA Tour Titanium MasterCard. Call 1-800-371-0065 now. You could save hundreds of dollars by transferring your balances from higher interest rate credit cards. And you'll receive a dozen top flight golf balls free with your first purchase or balance transfer. Call now and request the first USA PGA Tour or senior PGA Tour Titanium MasterCard or the first USA Titanium MasterCard. Call now for your free gift. Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, a year-long celebration. Number 39, Walter Payton. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN, presented by General Motors. Hey, man, she's here. Check it out. Oh, cool. There they are. Oh, oh, one. Which one? You like this one? You do that. Uh -huh. How about this little guy? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, good choice. by a resident of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Jimmy Hensley, and right now another resident, Jeff Burton, is leading the NASCAR Winston Cup race. And we're following him around this half-mile concrete and asphalt racetrack from the Penn's Oil Copter Camp. Still running that same line. Once he discovered that line, looks like he's really having been out of his job. And ready with those right sides only has passed Mark Martin. Trying to get by Rusty Wallace. This is for third spot, folks. <laughs> Barrel off of that turn, slipped a little bit, and Andretti's going to get up on the inside and turn three and four. That's amazing, really. We had not seen the two tire chains work that well, but it's working for him. He is in route to his best finish ever here in Martinsville. Previous, his best finish was a fifth in the fall race of 1996, but he is battling for the third position right now with Rusty and taking it. Almost. There he is. Now he's got it. It hasn't been uh, all good things for Andretti because early in the race, this is what happened to him, putting him a lap down. 
gets fronted by Ward Burton in the Caterpillar car, and he goes around as you're right. Before he could get the car rotted, he was lapped by the leader. Eddie Engineering has the most wins here at Martinsville, 16. In fact, more than, a lot more than anybody else. Rick Hendricks second on the list with seven. Lynn Childress with six and Roger Penske with five. I don't know if John Andretti has enough time to run down the front two. Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon. He's about three and three quarter seconds behind them. And we have just a little bit less than 50 laps to go in this race. 46 to go, as a matter of fact, as Jeff Burton comes down and completes lap number 454. The crowd stands by to see who's going to win this one. Stay with us. We'll be right back. contracts no victory laps not even a winner's circle but if you think these weekend warriors who run the score desert championship series take anything for granted think again which is exactly why they run with the duralast battery from autozone a battery so tough so dependable we back it with a two-year free replacement guarantee the next time you hit the road don't settle for anything less Choosing a personal watercraft can be a real test, but Rusty Wallace knows just what he wants. Polaris, when you know what you want, see your local dealer for big savings on select models. Some people have shrinks. Some people have their garage. Welcome back to ESPN's live coverage of the NASCAR Winston Cup race from Martinsville. The Goodies Body Pain 500 being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. And by Polaris Watercraft, ride the best. 40 laps to go in this one. Jeff Burton continues to hang on to the lead. Jeff Gordon running second. And remember the trouble that Jeff Gordon had trying to put a lap on Dale Earnhardt? Well, guess who the next? <laughs> See Jeff Burton and Dale Earnhardt and Burton way, way high. That's going to cost him some time. He had gotten very close to him. Well, it's close in there again now that, that Burton has uh, moved up there on Earnhardt. Burton seemed to have been able to get through that traffic better before, but one of the same guy is trying to laugh over. Some bumping and shoving going on up ahead of the leader. And this is going to let John Andretti close in pretty doggone close. We see Andretti is only about a half straightaway behind the leader now. John Andretti. Last time by, a little two seconds behind Jeff Burton. And running a faster lap than anybody else in the top six, John Andretti did. Burton on the inside of Dick Trickle. There's the fourth place battle. Mark Martin trying to edge out Rusty Wallace for that position. They have been going at it the last eight or ten laps. Both their cars are slipping and sliding. Rusty Walsh went down in turn one. Looks like he was on dirt. The car just spun sideways when he goes to the corner. You can see Mark Martin. He's on the inside of Rusty, but Rusty's been trying to run that outside line, get a grip. But the 
Marks on the inside, side by side. But Russell, what a great run he gets off the corner. Looked like it had 100 more horsepower, didn't it? Yes, it did. Side by side, wheel to wheel battle, and now... <laughs> right alongside Rusty Walton's car. But he did get, once again gets a great run off the corner. Mark to the inside again. <laughs> Boom. One in turn three. I used to call that shot the dog cam, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Like the dog walker, you know, that's where he would be if he was in the front seat with you. His head hung out the window, yeah. <laughs> well, that is an intense, intense battle. And neither one can gain a clear advantage. That camera shot that we're giving you is right behind the windshield post or A-pillar on this car. Oh. <laughs> you see a plastic thing there, the pulling air on Rusty Wallace, that's the little plastic piece on the right side is where this camera is located. And Mark Martin finally gets by and takes over that uh, four spot. Yeah. Well, he earned that, didn't he? Well, he did. <laughs> Meanwhile, up front, they've been able to get by Dale Earnhardt. And once Jeff Burton got by, when Jeff Ford got up there, he didn't contest the move, let him go by. But right now we've got two leaders, no detail. And there are less than 30 laps to go now. Will it be Jeff Burton, Jeff Gordon, John Andretti, Mark Martin, or Rusty Wallace? We'll take you to the checkered flag when we come back. McDonald's will give you a spectacular home theater from Best Buy. What you do with it is up to you. The excitement of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a home theater system from Best Buy. Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? There are many ways you can get stuck with a flat tire. But not with this tire. Even with no air pressure, you keep driving to safety. The Goodyear Aquasteel Run Flat. It could be the difference between getting stuck and getting there. Only from Goodyear. Body Paint 500 at Martinsville Speedway right after this race. Stay tuned for the first race of IROC 23 from Daytona International Speedway. And don't forget, we'll have a live IROC race for you next Saturday from Talladega Speedway. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. 25 laps to go now. Jeff Burton, the leader by about three quarters of a second on Jeff Gordon. Bill Elliott is slow up. I guess he just got knocked up out of the green. Looks like he's back up speed now. McDonald's car. Stay what? When Jeff Burton moved up to that higher line, that higher groove, looks like he really started picking up the speed. As we see teammates battling position. That's for eight spot. Jimmy Wallace trying to pass Kenny Schrader. relatively unscathed, but uh, not so for most of these cars out here. This 31 car, Bob, has been one of the fastest on the track here recently. He has run down Dale Jarrett, and Jarrett has been gaining on Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin, but but Mike Skinner has shut, cut off about three seconds off of him in the last 20 laps. Jarrett is sixth, and Skinner is in seventh. Brett Bodine, who for so long was on the lead lap, is now a lap down in 15th. Black dots uh -huh. drive. That was rubber. Yep. But, uh, and the DJ getting a little loose off the corner. And here goes Skinner up on the outside. But that slow car up there at Go, I'm afraid, is going to impede his progress. Kind of pop that pee, didn't it? <laughs> Jeff 
Jeff Burton still has a second lead over Jeff Gordon as we watch this battle once again for the sixth position. And John Andretti is 2.3 seconds behind the leader. Slow car of Joe Nemechek between them. Let's see, Nemechek is back in 37, 13 laps down. Yeah, Joe's uh, behind the wall early in the race for about seven laps. And then he's made numerous pit stops since then. Jeff Gordon has won twice at this racetrack. Jeff Burton has won once. Once so again, the battle wages for that sixth position. Skinner's on the inside of Jared this time. He can, oh, he can't get that grip, but not too bad. He does have position going in turn three. He's coming up on some traffic. The rest of all the Mark Martin's having to run on the outside, but Skinner is driving the heels off that thing. And Reddy has closed within two seconds. And he is the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Kenny Wallace, second quick. Thirteen cars on the lead lap, and he continues to close in now, down to less than two seconds. He's really picking up on Jeff Gordon. And with 17 laps to go, Jeff Gordon might be his problem because you think they would race for a few laps, and the time it would take Andretti to get by would allow Jeff Burton to get away. He may have the lead here in a couple of laps. 
on heavy traffic here could play a role in the outcome of this race. Johnny Benson just moves completely down on the inside out of their way. He don't want to be a part of affecting the race, but look at those cars up there in front of him, in front of the leaders. Andretti and a little loose coming off the corner, but stays right beside Jeff Burton. These two guys are the absolute best of friends. We're talking about John Andretti and Jeff Burton. Rick Mann just moves over, let these guys go. Five laps to go. We've got two cars in front of them side by side. Now Bobby Hamilton just moves over and lets them go. Now they're coming up on the 13th place car, Sterling Marlin, who's still at the moment on the lead lap. John Andretti looks pretty good coming off the corner here. Wow, down to the line. They are just absolutely dead even. Well, Jeff Burke gets a little bit loose going in. Now what's the 40 car going to do? Is he going to move over let them both go by? Yes, he does. Good, good. Yes, he are. That's it. Andretti looking for victory lane. It happened on lap 48. John Andretti gets bumped by Ward Burke. He spins around in turn number two and goes down a full lap. However, on lap 135, he was able to get the lap back, and he wins here at Martinsville. What a great story today. Look at the king. Out of point, John. First NASCAR Winston Cup win for Petty Interbike prices, the most of all time. And it started yesterday when the King's truck driver, Jimmy Hensley, from the Commonwealth of Virginia, showed some real emotion in victory lane, actually stopping here on the start-finish line before getting to victory lane and having an emotional win in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. John. Well, Richard Petty is the Winston Cup driver, won more races here at Martinsville than anyone else. Now you got another uh, win. You had a win yesterday. What a weekend. Yeah, we had a good weekend. I think Kyle lined up 10, so that was a good weekend for everybody on the Petty, Petty Enterprise operation. Great. And yesterday with Jimmy Hensley winning now, with uh, John winning, uh, how big a victory is this for you? Well, it's a pretty big victory. It's basically, you know, John didn't qualify too good. Then he spun out and lost the lap, made his lap back up. It was a hard race for him. He drove his fanny out all day long. And, uh, you know, the car stayed with him, and he stayed right with the car. And 
I don't, you know, I don't know what else to say. It, I told him, it, I told him it looked like Richard Petty driving that thing. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> well, those are words well spoken. <laughs> so Richard Petty heads for Victory Lane to meet his driver John Andretti. Twelve cars finished on the lead lap. Jeff Burton finishing second, then Gordon Daryl Waltrip also ended on the lead lap, and here are 16 through 30. See there, Earnhardt did uh, finish in the top 20 in 19th position. And the remainder of the field now, we only had one car out of the race at the end, and that was Ricky Craven. And John Andretti also gained in the point standings as a result of his victory here this afternoon. Jeff Burke continues to hang on to the lead. Jeff Gordon up to fourth position, and John Andretti gives the boss a lift to victory lane. <laughs> what a weekend it has been for the King. Two wins here at Martinsville. And there's Kyle Petty already out of his car over to congratulate John. Kyle coming home in 10th place here this afternoon. <laughs> he said, how did I do that? How did I do that? It's like Adam leaning in the door over there. Kept to the McDonald's winner circle, here's Jerry Punch. A big hug from wife Nancy in Victory Lane. John, what an effort. Last week, 26 to 4th. This week, 21st, a lap down, back on the lead lap, and then victory lane. What an effort. Well, I know we tested here. We had a good car, but it was about 80 degrees when we tested here. And um, the SCP Pontiac team has done a great job. And um, that two-tire car, I didn't think I had anything left. And um, with about 20 to go, I thought that I had my, my brakes were done. But I didn't care. I'd, I'd rather win the race or try to win in the race and go out with my brakes failing because I, I was always in the back. But um, you got to beat up race car. But... <laughs> it still work again. Two tires, and you had to catch and pass your good friend Jeff Burton for the victory. <laughs> yeah, he's a good friend, and um, there's no better, no better person other than Kyle. Um, maybe to run second. Uh, Jeff and I are real close friends, and um, and um, I don't really hate it for him because he's already won two races this year. It's good that he let. I, th I think he let his buddy win, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and what an effort. Double chicken money for two weeks in a row. John Andretti in victory lane at Martinsville. Only led four laps, the last four. The leader of the most laps was Rusty Wallace, who led 177. Way to go, John. Good run. Next week, we will be at the longest and the fastest track that the NASCAR Winston Cup Series competes on. But full qualifying is on Friday at 2 o'clock on ESPN, on 4 o'clock on ESPN2. The IROC race is at 1 o'clock live on ESPN. And then the NASCAR Bush Series, Touchstone Energy 300 at 3.30 over on ABC. Sunday, we begin with RPM today at noon, NASCAR today at 12.30, and then the Die Hard 500 will be on at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC. Well, coming up next, you can see the first race of IROC 23, the one held earlier this year at Daytona International Speedway. That's coming up next here on ESPN. John Andretti's margin of victory, just a little more than a second, and what an outstanding performance. And I disagree with John. I don't think Jeff Burton let his, let his buddy have a victory. I think that Jeff Burton, if he had had the car to stay in front, would have stayed in front. And a happy group of people in Victor Lane, and well, they should be. There's the celebration of the crew as John crossed the finish line, driving to his second NASCAR Winston Cup victory of his career and picking up the boss, King Richard, to haul him to victory lane. John Andretti wins at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. So we'll see you this coming Friday. Stay tuned for IROC. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com.